Hey everyone and welcome to another Crimson Scales character preview, this time on the Harrower Amber Aegis. If this is the first time you've stumbled onto a Crimson Scales video, the Crimson Scales is a community-made project, a fan-made spin-off expansion to Gloomhaven. It uses the original components or some of the original components from the physical game, and it has a brand new campaign, loads of new characters, new items, some new enemies, and yeah, it's just more content, and it's all community-made. So it's not officially canon, but it is sort of recognized by the official devs as being a cool project and uh, has certainly got some really high level of polish with some of these characters with a lot of love being chucked into it so it's been a real good experience sort of looking at all of these characters and getting to really explore what the community has come up with with these characters if you would like to get more information on the project if you go to thecrimsonscales.com there you can find the files for print and play there's also a tabletop simulator mod for this that you can download to play if you want to play on your pc or mac but also there was a physical printed version which unfortunately the pre-orders have now closed for that but it was worth mentioning that there was a physical version at one point made and um, who knows maybe in the future there will be another print run of that before we get started, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and my supporters over on Twitch, Mike and Truck Driving Gamer for the legendary support, guys. That's incredibly kind of you. I really appreciate it. If you would like to catch me live, come over to twitch.tv slash request every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. Wednesday is when I've been doing the Crimson Scale streams, although we only have one more character left to go, and it might be on the day that you might be watching this. So come over if you'd like to check that one out, but we will be carrying on with Crimson Scale's physical playthrough content, hopefully in the near future. Okay, let's take a look at the Harrower Amber Aegis. Imposingly large and brutish in nature, those known colloquially as Amber Aegis often lack the depth of unnerving intelligence compared to an average Harrower. Oh no, are we dumb? <laughs> We're dumb? Yeah, we make up for it threefold with sheer power. Okay, dumb but tough. Strong. Equal parts primal shepherd, ruthless strategist, and living arsenal, they are the first line of defense in a harrower colony. It is said that Amber Aegis are only found in wider society when they have failed to protect their hive from eradication. These lumbering brutes then wander with a single hardwired purpose, to find a new surrogate hive to protect. Some are happy to play this role in exchange for their guardianship, including merchants, nobles, and even mercenary guilds. Ooh. Okay, so just like a very protective character. Very, very protective. You just buy the Gloomhaven PC game, never played anything like it. Wish you luck and thank you for all the content you bring on the channel. Oh, well, good luck. Uh, Ill Drill, hope I said that right. Little Drill, Little Dill. Good luck, my friend. Good to have you here. I hope you're doing well and uh, enjoy the game. It's a good one. Okay, so let's take a look at the front of the mats. So this is the Amber Aegis Colony Tokens. Let's actually have them. 11 cards? 11 cards. Pretty decent. Very decent, actually. Nice big hand size. That's what we're talking about. That's good on somebody who... If you're a tank, occasionally you might want to burn a card to damage or for like some sort of big turn, like shield turn or something. So cool. 11 cards. That's good. So colony tokens. This is our main mechanic. So colony tokens are permanent overlay tiles. The Amber Ages can create in empty hexes. You can place up to two of each colony type. If the placement limit has been reached, remove, don't destroy, an existing token to create a new one. Okay. Cultivate abilities have ongoing effects that often provide bonuses to yourself and nearby allies as long as they are in the active area of the specified colony type. Interesting. Very interesting. Colony tokens can be moved through hexes with certain abilities. They cannot move through or end in walls or hexes with other colony tokens, but otherwise can end movement in any empty hex. A hex with a colony token is considered empty for movement and is not considered a negative hex for monster focus rules. Okay, that makes kind of sense. If any figure enters a hex containing a colony token, or if a colony token is moved through an unoccupied hex, 
Destroy the token. When a colony token is destroyed, the Amber Age just suffers one damage. Wow. Okay. That seems kind of rough. That seems really quite rough. So if anybody enters the hex containing it or passes through it, it's it's destroyed. When a coin token is destroyed, we suffer one damage. That is pretty rough. So we've got a couple of different colony tokens there. We've got the Fire Spitter Ant. We've got Rock Spine Termite, Ghost Shimmer Bee, and Death Shroud Spider. All right. Four different ones. It's going to be interesting to see what they all do. Quite unique. Very weird. Yet another class that would hate digital ambiguity. Yeah. This feels very rough if the enemy just randomly decides. Insect Master. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of nice, really, because Cthulhu kind of had that buggy theme, but it was really just like poison and the naming of the cards was very thematic. But if you actually look at like what they did, they just poison stuff and curse stuff and range stuff, you know, not anything um, like particularly like insecty, I guess. Well, I guess poisoning kind of insecty, but um, 12 health at level 1. That is a lot of health. Look at this health. Ooh. That is huge. I guess maybe that's to offset this. Maybe that helps offset this a little bit. We'll see. But that is a lot of health. The dials don't go that far. I guess you'd have to add, like, a dice or wound tokens. <laughs> you have to be careful to not step on a bug. I guess so, yeah. Otherwise, you're doing damage to your Ember Aegis. It's very angry. It's like the hive mind, right? You step on one bug, like, everybody feels it, you know? Mind tonight. Thank you so much for the resub, buddy. Three months in a row. The quest continues, my friend. I hope you're all having an awesome week. Welcome back, my friend. Good to have you here. Use two dials. Use the XP dial. You won't be needing it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get into the cards then. This is intriguing. This doesn't really tell you a lot because it's like, what does this mean? These are obviously going to come up on the cards, so... I have a horrible feeling that their cards might be quite messy. Like, lots of information on them. Let's see. Because um, this does not tell us what these do. So, I'm guessing that's going to have to come down to the cards themselves. Right. Um, perks. I guess we'll do perks when it feels natural. Or if not, we'll do them, like, at the end of the X cards or something. Before we go to, like, level 2. All right. First card up. Encasing webs. Heal five. Affect one ally within range three. That's a big heal. It's a big range. Pull two. Immobilize. Consume fire to add retaliate one. Affect the healed ally. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting one. That's a really interesting one. I mean, if you have a if you have an, an ally who doesn't really care about moving, it's a it's a very big one one shot heal, and the downside could quite easily be mitigated. I guess the problem is the pulling towards you might be a bit weird. Hey, Howie, just got here. Is this a DLC class or no, new game edition? This is um for Crimson Scales, which is the community kind of spin off project from Gloomhaven. So it's available on Tabletop Simulator or as print and play. Or if you were lucky enough to get in on the printed versions. There were some printed versions done. <clears throat> so this is what you get when you cross a scarecrow with a spider. <laughs> I guess it kind of is like that, Nova. It does have that kind of look to him, actually. It was quite raggedy. Where'd you get those clothes? Hmm? 
So yeah, I feel like this is a really strong heal. Thanks, you'd rather not be encased in webs and forever bothered in biting bugs. Not sure what that word means, but yeah, I wouldn't really like being encased in webs personally. But if the immobilize isn't a bad thing, and if the pull could even get you closer to where you wanted to be, does it really matter? The retaliate one feels a bit tacked on, I will say. Like, I guess maybe it could be some nice upside if you're doing that's like a tank character, maybe. It does feel a little bit tacked on, though. Covered, right. Gotcha. I can't fill in the blanks today. Is the pull mandatory? It could be beneficial, so not negative per se. I would read it as a cost of playing the action, but that's just because otherwise it would be too good, right? I would consider it to be a cost of playing the action. can't skip it regardless because it's subtext both pull and immobilize are part of the heal it's part of the one and the same action i guess usually the thing is that whenever you get given a pull action you can decline it but yeah like usually you would see an effect like this on a um like an attack right and you could always decline the push or pull um yeah i i, I read it almost like a cost of playing the action right like hey you can play the action but you have to pay this which is Pulling and immobilizing that ally, you know? That kind of thing. Just like the Void Warden and the Heal 5 Poison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. That's a good parallel to draw. Not if you play with Frosthaven pool rules. True, maybe this was designed before that. That's a good point, though, Kira. If using the Frosthaven rules, no, but would be immobilized regardless. Then that would be obviously a little bit, little bit better. But I think this is pretty decent for a heal card. This is much better than the than Black Boon, for example. Because Black Boon just poisons the target, so it kind of ends up being like a heal three. At least you can find a situation when encasing webs is actually going to be maybe even beneficial for your team. Like the pull and immobilize might not matter. It might even be beneficial. Get them out of trouble. You could do it to somebody while they're long resting. What does it matter, right? Like, I feel like compared to something like Black Boon, apart from Black Boon making an element, which is, you know, that is a, a plus. But it, it does feel like this is much more kind of flexible and actually maybe a bit more fun to play with. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's hilarious to see someone on the brink of death, long resting, and you pull them to safety and they fully heal. Yeah. You can say to them, like, if someone's like, guys, I really need to long rest. I'm just, I'm, I'm in, the, I'm in trouble. I need to long rest. Um, and then, of course, like, the enemy draws some sort of obnoxious card that's going to attack everything. You can heal them up, pull them to safety, maybe, and then move in front yourself. Because, of course, this is top action. Yeah, it could have some situational plays. As far as heal cards go, this is a pretty good one, I think. 33 initiative is obviously not amazing, but not terrible. Like, not completely unplayable. Like, it's it's an, it's an initiative. The bottom attack one, immobilize. Target up to three things, though. That's quite nice. Attacking three things for one. One XP. That's a good bottom action. Of course you'd have to be in the right position which might be a bit weird we'll have to keep our eye out for like things like top moves for stuff like this because you know something like this is it looks really good but are you going to be in the right position to do it and of course you can't move away but if you have a card like scurry for example also is something you you get 
then suddenly this card becomes really good. So we just have to keep an eye out for a, uh, a move on the top. So then we can maybe go back and use this. But as it is, still pretty good. Just might be difficult for you to run away. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> this is probably less likely to be on digital than Forgotten Circles. What? Oh, th there's no chance Crimson Scales is coming to, to digital. I'll be like, there's zero chance of that. Zero. Somebody might mod a couple of characters in. But that would be an awful lot of work, but I could maybe see that. But there's absolutely no chance because it's not it's not official Gloomhaven canon and you know Gloomhaven Digital is. So there's no way. Like if 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 Crimson Scales was put into Gloomhaven Digital, it would be an acknowledgement that it's actually like part of the Gloomhaven world and you know that opens up a whole other kind of problems and you know also you know isaac has always been the person who's designed all of the, the all or most of the characters or had the sign off at least on on everything and kind of kept it within his control whereas cribs and scales is a narrative told by other people in the same universe so it's like fan fiction right it's not like it's really 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 good fan fiction but it's still fan fiction Maybe they'll make a movie out of it someday. <laughs> you know? Just like they did that Twilight one. Okay, moving on. Um, Haunt Carapace. Uh, attack 5, PS1, push 1, wound. 2 XP and a burn. Mm, nah... No, nope. you know, you know me. I don't like big, big attack, single target burns. If this had something, if this had stun on it instead of maybe like the PS one, or the push one, or yeah, just neither of those two things. Attack five, stun wound. I feel like that would be. Then, if the bottom ability is good enough in a pinch, if you really needed it, it was there for you. But this is like an attack that I just would never play, to be honest. You think it'd be worth if you push into a trap? I mean, push one is very low amount of push, though. I mean, sure, if you can kill an enemy, if you can guarantee kill an enemy with it, yeah. But that's very few and far between. These um, these enhancement dots seem very um, optimistic as well. <laughs> Attack four stun is a burn on the brute. Yeah, I think I actually probably prefer it <laughs> to this. Funnily enough, because it at least, like, at least if you miss on that, you've stunned something, right? On this, if you miss, you've you've like, wow, terrible. Decent on a boss, but mostly played for initiative, I guess. Yeah, let's look at the bomb because maybe it can save it. So 26 initiative. Starting to, yep, a bit better now. You know, 26, pretty playable initiative. Move two, retaliate oneself. Consume earth to get an additional retaliate. And that seems okay if we have some shielding abilities too. Which I, I'm guessing we'll have some stuff coming up maybe. Might give us something. I mean, retaliate two is a good amount of retaliate. If we can deflect a lot of the other attacks coming our way, right? Seems good. Decent for a tank? Yeah, I agree. Just don't miss Banker. If only it was that easy. <clears throat> 11 card hands. So unless we have a desirable early burn, some big burn attacks can be good. Yes. Hey, MQ. Nice to catch one of these live. I've been keeping up with the VODs, loving the CS reviews, and looking forward to see the eventual playthrough setup. Hey, comrade. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Well, welcome to the live stream. 
That is awesome of you. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub for two months now. I appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying the VODs and stuff. And yes, exciting news on that front, actually. I Yesterday, I bought my second camera. So that should be delivered. I think it's being delivered tomorrow, actually. It's either tomorrow or it's Friday. So then I'm going to have two cameras. I bought basically not exactly the same as I've got, but the same line of cameras. So I use Sony cameras. So I bought like another Sony camera so I can use the same lenses and stuff. And um, then I just need to work out like how I'm going to position everything really. But that was like the miss one of the missing bits of kit. So I, I purchased it. And that's, to be honest, all financed by you guys supporting the channel and everything. Because everything that you guys, you know, that you guys donate or, you know, through the Patreon or sub on Twitch, all of that stuff all goes into me trying to make the videos better. And I've been kind of waiting for like, till I had like enough so I could be like, okay, I can get something really good. And I'm really happy that, yeah, I bought like a bunch of new camera equipment. So I'm already using the new lens, which some of you have like may have noticed on the new YouTube video. And, and today I am using the new lens right now, giving it a go as my regular stream lens. I might change my mind on that and go back to the old one, but so far it's been okay. But yeah, thank you so much for the support, dude. I appreciate it. Using your Amazon game priming sub. Amazon Prime Gaming sub. It really annoyed me when they changed that. <laughs> Can this character ignore negative item effects? Good question. Yes. Usually a good sign, right? Usually a good sign. <clears throat> Incoming multi-dimensional bonks. I mean, once I've got the cameras, like I, I bought them mainly for like physical Crimson Scale streams and Frosthaven streams. But yeah, I will be able to have like and I bought like a new I bought a new capture card as well. That was another thing that I needed so that I could put everything in. Loads. Loads. So I'm looking forward to that. Lots of fun things to come. Cool. Well, I think that this is like a pretty okay card. This is... I always find that Retaliate something that people tend to over-evaluate. Like, they they tend to like go, wow, Retaliate too. That's too true damage to everything that attacks me. It's like, yes, but you're going to have to take damage yourself. So unless you've got a plan for that, you know, it, it's... Sometimes it can be a bit underwhelming. Like, Retaliate is is like extra damage on top which is nice but i would i'm very cautious to just just go down the retaliate route because of course ranged enemies can get out of it and all of that stuff so unless you're playing someone like the red guard who's like really tuned to retaliate like has like just ridiculous retaliate um because of shield spikes i find like it's something that other tanks need to they can mix into their kit but it's not necessarily something that you should like bank on being like insane so I i'm hopeful that we can maybe turn this into something more but well, we'll see we haven't seen any of the uh the bugs yet right Nothing. <clears throat> how much is a camera which allows me and create to have a handshake um I'm trying to think if i could even it could be possible well, the problem with that is Craig doesn't have any hands. So that will be the first hurdle. The first hurdle is getting Craig a new pair of hands. And hands are expensive, I've heard. So yeah. <laughs> That's the first problem. Sort that problem and then the rest is probably pretty easy. All right, next card. Retribution of the Hive. Retaliate to self. Create fire, one XP. Um, 16 initiative. There we go. That's... I mean, it creates an element. It's an early initiative. It does feel a little bit weak. Because again, unless unless you've got some super duper plan, like, oh, I've got this really cool combination of two cards that's going to make this really effective. Retaliate 2 on its own feels very so-so. Like, I would never, like, I may as well, like, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you had three enemies, right, that were attacking you. Um, 
as you play this, retaliate to self, right? Instead of just using it as an attack to default action, which you could do. You could just use it as an attack to default action, right? So let's say you use it as a default attack to action and you draw like a plus one. So you do three damage to one of those three enemies that's going to be attacking you, right? So you've done three damage there. You've maybe killed that enemy, possibly. Um, next, let's just say you did or you didn't, whatever, it doesn't really matter. When you're going to be attacked by these enemies, they're all going to attack you for whatever amount, be it an attack two, three, whatever. Let's just say three, average number. So you're going to take nine damage potentially to do sort of like six damage back. Like it's not really a great trade unless you've got other things going on. So like as a top action, like when you look at something like this, like it, it becomes hard to justify this as a top action when realistically... Just probably playing it as an attack too is probably going to be like actually just the better way of playing it. Like just you're going to take less damage. Uh, I mean, well, so you, can, you could potentially take less damage because you might kill something. Um, you, you're you advancing the scenario because you're going to have to kill enemies anyway, right? And in, in a lot of situations when there's less than three enemies that will get retaliated through you, it's going to be bad. So I don't know, like this feels very particular, but creating fire could be enough to maybe tip it over the edge if you really need it. But it's, yeah, I, I feel like it's, this is dangerous territory because this is just going to be better in a fair amount of situations. And that's always a bit dodgy for a, a top action, right? Because your top actions have got to be good. They've got to be your best. Your best actions are always your top actions most of the time. <clears throat> Retaliate can be very strong with more players. Yes, but you could also just die. <laughs> so that's the thing, right? You need shield. If you have shield, then it becomes a different. Then you kind of change the conversation. But if you don't have shield, like for example, if you were to go, cool, I'm going to play this. I'm going to retaliate two. And I'm going to do this. I've got retaliate four, guys. Um, and like, you got any shield? Nope. Okay, but you got retaliate four. Yep. And then like some guy just comes up and like, times twos you on an attack four and does eight like oh i'm actually gonna die <laughs> it's like yep yep that was good <laughs> you know i don't know maybe this is like me being a bit cynical because of uh, my experiences of playing on increased difficulty but may maybe again this is a good example of maybe on lower levels of difficulty there's not so much of a problem um the bottom is move to retaliate to affect one adjacent ally much much more playable, in my opinion. Because then you can just pick and choose one ally who may be going to get hit by something. Like, to be honest, I'd play a 16 initiative move too, regardless. The fact that you can get something else on top of that is just upside. So, yeah. I, I, I don't really rate the top of this card unless we have some amazing bottom, which maybe we'll come to one and it'll be a really good combo. But on its own, not particularly good. This actually, though, I mean, I'd play a 16 initiative move too extra stuff right imagine this with red guard though um yeah this with someone like red guard would be would be good why would you want to apply retaliate to an ally kind of bizarre you are the tank you're the one who should be here well that doesn't always come off that way and if you're playing in a um, team where you have like a few of you um, like with the potential to tank, like you have a couple of like frontliners. You know, you can off tank sometimes, right? I don't know how many party compositions. This is one of the add on characters, right? So this is one you unlock. This isn't one that's actually in any of the starting, um, starting groups. Is that right? Am I right in thinking that? Or am I wrong in thinking that? But this is one of the correct, yeah. So, so this would be one that you could unlock. So there's potential that you could have like another tanky character in in your party that you could buddy up with. I think it's very like I think it's very awkward to say like you know like imagine this character with the red guard because that's like you're imagining a situation that's just like never going to happen, <laughs> almost you know. Like, it's nice. Like, yeah, if you take this character, it's kind of like with the Frosthaven characters. I'm sure there'll be some broken combinations of characters between Frosthaven, Gloomhaven, Crimson Scales, Jaws of the Lion uh, with some of their abilities. But 
you know, I think you just have to take the game as it is. So I guess Crimson Scales is a little bit different because a lot of the design of the characters was done kind of outside. You know, they didn't take the game into consideration. It was just done from the outside. But, um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's very unlikely that someone's going to play this character with the red guard, isn't it, really? We've seen four halves of cards and three of them say the word retaliate on fair. Moving on. <laughs> we'll see if... Uh, hopefully we'll get something to do with these bugs in a minute. A sentry Swarm. On the next six ranged attacks targeting you, performed by enemies within range four, gain retaliate to... Another one with retaliate. On the next six ranged attacks targeting you, performed by enemies within range four, gain retaliate to range four for those attacks. Okay, this is another one. I mean, again, not particularly great. I, I'm, there's got to be something else going on with this character. Maybe it's something to do with the bugs. Maybe it just feels like we've had so much retaliate already. There's got to be some card that's like gonna like the light bulb is gonna go off in a minute, right? If I miss, might retaliate on site, I may not have a good stream here. What? Because it's all retaliate? Well, we'll see. I mean, like, I think retaliate's not bad, but you have to have the right combination of things with it. Like, it's not just, like, you can't just have retaliate equals win. You know, you have to then have immobilize. You have to have muddle. You have to have, you know, disadvantage. You have to have shields or some way of healing or something, you know, which looks like we're coming up to something a bit in here now, which might, might help a little bit in those respects. So... Um, but yeah, this, this top action, I guess I'm a bit so-so on. I mean, it's a range four, so nice way to get those archers, the maybe avoiding your retaliate, but it is still only retaliate two. So what's that, like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve damage, but how much damage are you going to have to take to do twelve out? I don't know. We'll see. The bottom of this, though, seven initiative. So this will be, this will be playable just because of this. Um, before the next two times you are attacked this round, if you do not have ward, gain ward. Well, that's, that's a good one. That's good. For a bottom action, that's pretty good. Ward is uh, a new condition, which is the next time you take damage, um, de get dealt half of that damage rounded down, I believe. So, or maybe it's rounded up, but essentially it's half damage. <clears throat> ward with that top retaliate with this uh, it's using two early initiatives together I've never I'm not a huge fan of that it's a very nice action can save three to 66 damage that's a very specific amount <laughs> that's a very large range <laughs> good save the floor is three the ceiling is 66. No, I think you meant to say six, but yeah. <laughs> I, I I think, yeah, I think it's it's good. It is good. And seven initiatives playable because you just use it as a move two occasionally if needed to. So, yeah. No. I think this is good. Don't, I'm not a huge fan of the top, but again, like there's got to be something coming up that we aren't seeing yet. Oh, still no bugs, huh? Attack two, target two, wound. Consume earth, add plus one target. I consume fire. All targets suffering damage equal to plus two their shield value. Ooh. Suffer damage equal to plus two their shield value. For two plus their shield value. That's really good. If you're against like a, this just kills the living spirit on sight, right? It just kills like all of the living spirits on sight because it's, it's they suffer damage as well it's not like it's not an attack so you attack them you get wound up which is pretty beneficial on those types of enemies anyway and then potentially you know if you've got like a shield four living spirit that takes six I 
I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, this is very, very strong. Quite specific. But even against, you know, like... To be honest, even against... Even against just like an enemy that doesn't even have any shield. Or maybe just like shield one. It's still... Two damage to a bunch of stuff. So you could be looking at like... Six pure damage. Plus the wound. Which is kind of like maybe another three. So about Maybe about nine. Plus then there's the attack on top. Plus maybe some upside of the shield value. It's a burn. Yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty good. I mean, the... the, the um, I think the, me the fact that it's a melee might make it a little bit awkward to, to try and get all three. But probably not. You just make sure you find the right spot. Like sometimes if you've got like living spirits, they'll just be... They'll dart around or they'll be elusive. So the fact that it's melee might make it a little bit more restrictive, but... I think this is good. For a one-off burn, deals with a specific tricky enemies, but also could just be used against any enemy, really, just for a good bit of damage when you need it. And with the target three, it's very similar to something like... You know, it's very similar to something like Net Shooter on the Tinkerer or Fire Orbs, you know, as long as you can get all three targets. Like, it's very, it's very comparable to cards like that. And then it has a really good upside here. But maybe just like wrecking something with shield or, or even just doing extra damage, right? In fact, it could be better than a lot of those cards because of this. Yeah, this is very strong. But quite, quite specific sometimes. Nice one, Ellie. Yeah, I think so. This is uh, probably our best action that we've seen so far. I would say. Like in terms of like just like a one-off kind of like big burn. Like it. 45 initiative is meh. Really bad, right? Right in the middle. Nothing we can really use that for. Poison. All allies and enemies in the targeted area. 1 XP. Ooh, it's quite a big area too, right? We're standing here. So two in front and three behind. Little kind of cone. And that's... It, it's always good to have some like flexible bottom actions that aren't, you know, about movement. And we kind of had one back here with the immobilize. We got this. I like it. Yeah, I like this. I I guess the problem with this card, though. The problem with this card is that there's going to be some rounds where you're just going to look down at your hand and be like, I wish I didn't have this card in my hand. Like, you'll be like, Ugh. like, it's going to be too early to burn the top for corrosive spittle. And it's going to be like the 45 initiative is going to be unusable. And the poison, like you're not in a position where you can use the poison bottom action in a good way. There's going to be a fair few times when that comes out because both the top and the bottom are fairly specific. And I think that might be a bit of a concern for this card. It's the kind of card that when you go to like long rest, you're kind of shifting through your cards. and You're like, yeah, I played that. I played that. I played that. And then it's like hanging out in your hand. And you're like, well, I didn't really play that card. Like, it didn't really do anything. And you, know, you start to get like a bad feeling about the card. Um, I feel like it sits in that kind of area. But like a cup, if you do use the bottom regularly, it's going to feel great. But if you get caught between turns and it's just not working out for whatever reason, this card's going to feel like a dead card in your hand sometimes. Uh, until you obviously can find a good way of doing this. <clears throat> Mid initiative needs, means it needs to be paired with a low number card to get in position for this attack. Yes. And we haven't seen anything greater than a move two yet. We definitely need some bigger moves. I think there's a bigger move coming up right now. Risky card, has Katana. Yeah, I agree with that. Risky card. It's it is it's the kind of card where initially I'm like, this is very strong. I should definitely bring this. But then when you actually start playing and you're kind of like, and you're going through a scenario, it's the kind of card that like at the end of a scenario, if you were to sit down and review, like do a little review and be like, okay, well, how did I like, how did I think I performed? Like, how did my hand perform? It's one of those kind of cards where I'll be like, 
unless I had a really good use of the top, like it just went off and just killed a bunch of stuff. Did like it was a really good positioning for it. If it was like fairly average, I feel like it'd be the card that when you went to level two, you'd be like, oh, maybe I consider cutting that card, you know? So moving on, but I, I think like this is very specific. This, this feels almost like an X card. It's interesting that it's a level one card. It feels like an X card to me. Sideboard for high shield enemy scenarios. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's why maybe um, it might have been better placed as an X, but we'll see. Next, we have Burning Stingers. Attack one, range three, target three. All targets suffer one damage. We're going to zoom fire. I mean... It's like... This is like a more versatile, massive boulder. I mean, this is a lot of targets. What's our deck like? Although, actually, I don't want to get into that too much right now. Attack one is obviously quite low, but in theory, at level one, it's normal difficulty. It'll at least last for a little while. So you see, if you draw a minus one, it's going to suck. Draw a minus two, it's going to suck. Draw a miss, it's going to suck. But every card sucks when you draw a miss. Um, doesn't play very well with times twos. This is the kind of card that's just ripe for a power potion. Power potion or some kind of buffing ability, like coming either from yourself or from an ally, some way of buffing this up to be a little bit more than attack one. Then suddenly you've got like a reusable fire orbs and you're going to feel like, oh my God. <clears throat> Luminary has a similar card, single target, burn have like guaranteed one extra damage. Yeah. And sometimes the one extra damage will actually be all you'll need. I can absolutely see situations where you play this and it's just to consume the fire and you're like, I don't care what modifiers I draw. I'm just killing like two annoying things and you maybe get a, an extra value on a third thing. Like, I can absolutely see like there's, there's a lot to be said for cards that just guarantee kills in whatever way that they do. Guarantee damage, which is why... Like, pure damage like this is so important because you don't have to run that risk of that bad RNG, right? And although this is only one damage, there's definitely going to be situations where your enemy's hanging out on one health because someone drew a minus one when they thought, you know, oh, he's got three health, I'll attack him for three, and they drew their minus one. Like, happens all the time. So, yeah. Or attacking shielded, still going to get some damage in. Yeah, exactly. And because this is ranged, this would work with Piercing Bow if you wanted to go down that route. So I think this is pretty decent. It's not like, you know, it's not like outrageous. It's pretty fair, I think, but has some nice situational use and will uh, come up clutch probably for you occasionally. And then when you draw a plus two, you know, on an attack one, it's still three. It's pretty good. So... If you can get strength on a little power potion or something, this could grow into something a bit more. I like cards like this because they they start low, but you know, with items and things, you can start to kind of raise the power level up and actually start to do some really cool things with it as well. So yeah. This this is like a this is a card that makes me think, okay, let's start looking for ways we can buff this. You know, let's start looking for other cards and combinations of cards to make this better. Because this is a this is a good base of a card can we elevate it up to another level and um feels like you should probably be able to do that and also you can enhance this which is nice might be quite expensive because of the target three you can even increase up to target four right so this this feels like a really good money sink for an enhancement too mm. enhance all of them because of greed yeah maybe so the bomb is move three create fire 73 initiative you know it's a, it's a late initiative it's a usable late initiative not the best late initiative but it's usable um yeah i mean it's a move three make an element that you care about it's been playable on every character before this that needed an element to make their character work so yeah the only annoying part of this of course is that you really have a very good use of that fire on the top of this card so you know, feels like you're kind of passing up this pretty good action to do this. But maybe you can empower something up. Like if you 
You know, to try and make this happen on the next turn, that's really important. So it's a it's a very easy way to generate an element. So yeah, this is probably our best card so far, I would say. Both the top and bottom action have good value and the initiative is, is usable as well. So maybe not the best initiative you'd be hoping for, but it's usable, so. Oh, another 73. Anti-Venom. Heal one self. Attack two. If poison was removed with the heal ability, add poison. Interesting. Do we have some way to self-poison ourselves? Do we have a way to self-poison ourselves coming up? Seems very oddly specific. Or maybe it's just for the theme. Anti-Venom. They just wanted to make it like the theme. We can consume Earth to get another heal too. Ooh. This might be one of my favorite heal cards, chat. Because it has the word attack written on it as well. <laughs> I feel like the best kind of heal card is one with the word attack written on it. So... Poison is one of the most common enemy effects. Doesn't have to be a self poison to pop up. No, I suppose not. That's a fair point. Just feels like when you see something like this, it generally like would maybe imply that there was some other synergy going on. You'd almost think that a character like this would be immune to poison, just naturally. But I guess that would break the game. <laughs> I think this is very, this is very good. Getting to do a bit of a heal. Attacking for two. Maybe, I mean, if you get the poison, great. If you don't, it's no biggie. To be honest, a card like this would often just read something like attack two with poison and nothing else, right? So this is a little bit more interesting because it gives you a bit more flexibility, but maybe the poison's not always guaranteed. And the good thing as well is that you do the heal oneself, remove the poison. Do the attack two. If the poison was removed, add poison. So you get to add that poison to the attack two. Then if you had earth, consume that to get another heal too. So actually just go up to health. So in theory, even when you're poisoned, you're still going to get at least two health back. Whereas if you're not poisoned, you're going to get three. So that works quite nice. Like it's quite a versatile um, heal in that respect. <clears throat> What's interesting is I haven't really said best card on these tunes before. Probably not. Let me say that we know that when like one of the cards is one of our strongest and early, early cards. This I think is a very strong early card as well. Similar to this, just the same thing. And also the bottom is move three, make earth. So it's pretty much it's, it's pretty much the same. I think I prefer burning stingers, but. Only because I'm a damaged man at heart. I feel like anti-venom is also very strong. Nice to just do an attack as well and maybe finish an enemy off if you needed to. Yeah, I guess my only complaint with this would be that if you're finishing an enemy off, do you really care about the poison? It doesn't f feels like an attack maybe you'd want to make immediately but i guess if you're a tank you're always going to be in the thick of it so yeah if you're a tank you're always in the thick of it so there's always things to attack always heals that need to be done always health to recover so yeah <clears throat> okay nurture the weak heal three affect one ally within range three regenerate Create Earth, 1 XP. Effect 1 eye within range 3, regenerate. Regenerate is a really good effect. Regenerate, for those who don't know, is an effect that came in uh, Forgotten Circles, which was um, like the opposite to wound, essentially. So you would heal one at the beginning of your turn rather than take a point of damage. So whenever you take damage, regenerate falls off. 
So a really good one to put on somebody who's going into a long rest or is, um, you know, really low and maybe needs to take some time away. The fact that you can't target yourself with this might be a little bit odd. Like if you're a tank, generally you're the one who probably needs the healing. So maybe a little bit odd with that. But I don't think it's a bad ability. Makes, makes an element too. I think it's I think it's a, a serviceable heal. I probably prefer the other one over this, just because I think that one was a bit more fun. Which is the heal five with the immobilized pull two. Obviously, this has got no real downside to it, and the initiative's better too. The twenty initiative that's nice and nice and early, pretty good. Shield one affects self and all allies within range two. So there's the shield card we've been waiting for. And you can enhance it maybe to be shield two. Okay. So maybe shield two, retaliate two for a single round of play. Well, might be okay. <clears throat> Lots of bonuses on top of this, the standard heal three, range three. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that would be the standard kind of power level for that top action for sure. Yeah, the Tinkerer is just sat there. Sad Tinkerer with his heal three, range three. Yeah. Well, we've learned. We've learned. You had to be the trendsetter, Tink. We had to learn from you. Everybody learned from you. Um, shield one is a small amount of shield, but it's a bottom action. Sometimes you don't need to move. 20 initiatives is okay. Has some good combinations with some of the retaliate. At the moment, I'm not seeing a very clear line with this character, though, I will say. I mean, I, I, I feel like we need some more cards. Like, the tanking build at the moment, to me, feels very vanilla and just very kind of... Well, it's actually just completely lopsided to retaliate so far. So, we need to find some, uh, some more shield. Definitely. Okay. Oh, finally. Yes. Shelter the nest. Cultivate. Place one rock spine termite uh, in an empty hex within range two. Consume any elements to create earth. Okay. You and all allies gain shield one while adjacent to at least one rock spine termite. Okay, that's cool. Right, we're starting. Okay, now we're getting to uh, to like where the the kind of character has its light bulb moment okay so we can get shield one as long as we're adjacent to at least one of these which adjacent could be quite hard i guess right because if an enemy moves into it then it just immediately goes or if we want to move through it like so getting it adjacent to everybody while still not wanting anybody to move through it might be a little bit tricky But in theory, this could stay out for as long as you want, right? Could be a long old time. <laughs> Some more shield is there? Yeah, here it is. So if we have a if we have a permanent shield one, suddenly the retaliate starts to look a little bit better. Hmm, hard one to judge this, because like usually you have like a. A, a timeline right where i can say well this card does this and it lasts for this number of rounds and it does this thing right and you can quantify the amount of damage it does or prevents or whatever but this is like in theory if you were to on the first turn of the game you were in a single room scenario you were to play this and you managed to stay adjacent to it forever i mean that's just permanent shield one which is worthy of a burn <laughs> that's that's burn worthy, right? However, if you play it in a scenario where there's loads and loads of um you know melee enemies who keep moving in and keep destroying your termites, it's gonna feel pretty rough. It's gonna feel like it's a struggle to get it going. So it's like a really hard card to, to 
judge because it's there's so many things that could happen outside of your influence to determine how good this is it's a single obstacle rock slide that was your allies no it's not an obstacle so enemies can move into it and you can move into it and that's what destroys it so there's no um yeah it's not if it was that yeah that'd be insane but no unfortunately not it is not they're not obstacles they are like they'll they're like underlay tiles you put overlay tiles you put them on the board then if an enemy was to move into it or any figure so if you or any of your allies were to move into it it would immediately get destroyed you would suffer one damage because it's destroyed because someone stepped on your bugs Does it sound tanky now? I feel like we still need some way of guaranteeing the retaliate. That's where retaliate always falls down for me. Is that you need to have somebody else generating the value. You know, something else kind of giving the model or immobilize or whatever it needs to be to guarantee that those enemies don't run off. You know? Just don't get attacked at range? Easy. Yeah, I'm sure it is. However, if this car, if this top didn't tickle your fancy, 16 initiative move four definitely will. So this is just premium, premium movement on a premium initiative. So regardless of how we, I feel about this, and I would love to play with this and see how, where it goes. This is just nuts. So yeah, That's a easy, easy auto include. Very easy also to include. Okay. Seek nourishment. Place one ghost shimmer bee colony token in any empty hex within range two. Consume any element to make either lethal fire. You and all allies adjacent to at least one ghost shimmer bee colony at the start of their turn may perform a heal oneself. Okay. Nice. Bees heal. Rock Spine Termite Shield. Gotcha. And that seems... Okay. I mean, again, similar to similar to this. A little bit spicy. A bit spicy? I think it's that spicy. <clears throat> or to include, I say. Am I, am I wrong? Is it not really? Not really? I mean, it usually is at level one at least. Um, I mean, it's kind of like Music Note, and that was good. But it's obviously less reliable than Music Note. The good thing about these guys, the good thing about these is that you can kind of place them on the board and then just forget about them for a little bit. You know, you don't have to choose, oh, I'm going to have this one or I'm going to have this one. You could have all of them in theory. Probably pretty hard to pull off. <laughs> Very hard to pull off, I think. What if our allies are allergic to bees? Then I guess you need to find a new party. A bit awkward, but yeah. 24 initiative, move four jump. Very strong again. I guess we choose to play the top of one of these and the bottom of the other one, maybe. Is that the idea? On these two. Seems very good. Okay, well, this is good to know. So bees maybe heal. And rocks by termites, maybe not. I guess this goes out though, right? So when we play these, they actually go into our active area, so they kind of count against our hand. So Um presumably if we choose to discard the card. Did it say anything about that? I guess the token would stay out because then you could maybe change it at a future time. I'm not quite sure how exactly that works. The card itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is how I thought it was. So essentially we would play... You, you pay your colony token. If at some point you just wanted to 
discard this into your discard pile because you wanted to long rest and get your cards back and give yourself more stamina. Then, uh, then for the, the period of time that this is not in your active area, the bee colony will be there, but it just wouldn't give you any active benefits. Like, these cards have to be in your active area to give you the benefit. So I guess there could be a really cool... Well, preempting maybe what we're going to see, but it'd be really cool if you could, like, the bees could be healed and then maybe you place some more bees and then you change it and now, now all of the bees are damaged instead and then everyone takes damage from the bees and then maybe you play this to then heal like so maybe there's some really good kind of playing of the different auras that could be fun changing them when it suits you okay repel intruders place one fire spitter ant colony token in an empty hex within range two consume any element make fire you and all allies gain retaliate one with at least mm, yeah all right, permanent retaliate one. So we've got permanent shield, permanent, permanent retaliate. Okay. Well, not necessarily permanent, but yeah. It could be if we protect it and we stay next to it. I didn't read the bottom of the bees. I did. Let's move for jump. <laughs> the Z. We'll probably play the bottom of this or we'll play like the bottom of this. Like we'll pick probably pick and choose. The heal was covering me with fire ants. True. Okay. I mean, I, I out of all of these, I'm, I'm this is the one I'm least excited about. These two I liked quite a bit more than this. We have a bunch of retaliate already. Do we really need more? I guess you've got nothing to lose. You can just play it. 36 initiative is the worst out of these ones we've seen so far. Move one, attack one, push one. You may destroy one colony token within range three to add a mobilize. Oh, that's kind of nice. Um, destroying, though, means that we take a damage. So it will cost us the colony token and a point of damage to us to do that. Against some really, really tricky enemy, it might be worth it. It feels like quite a big investment, but considering that so far these have not been burns... It's not like it's terribly hard for you to get more colonies out. So and I'm sure there'll be a, a period of time when you're like, yeah, that that colony token is like behind us. I can't be bothered to move it. it we don't need to worry about it anymore. Like it will just work. More retaliate more. It doesn't need to be more. We don't need more. There's a, there's a point where we just don't need any more. Okay. I think I think I, I quite like this. I don't like this. I quite like this. I like the idea that when like a colony is kind of had its had its uses, you can then push it. The only annoying thing is it has to be within range three of you. So it can't be one that you left like in the complete previous room. So you know there's a in theory, if it's within range three of you. There's a chance that it could actually be provide value by being a colony. Does the word destroy indicate that you take damage? Yes, that was why it sort of said here. When a colony token is destroyed, the Amber Aegis suffers one damage. And specifically why it says here, you can place up to two of each colony type. If the placement limit has been reached, remove, don't destroy an existing token to create a new one. So you don't get punished for kind of moving them around like taking one off the board to put another one on the board but... out of these three cards i think i like the shield one the best then maybe the heal one then this one Ooh, one to x cards <clears throat> when it says if a colony is moved through does that include jump i would assume so yes because you still move through a hex with jump teleport would be the way to do that wouldn't it because teleport is not moving <clears throat> okay overwhelming swarm new new where are we 12 
Overwhelming Swarm then. Attack 4, immobilize, 1 XP. Good start. Great start. Perform the attack as if you were occupying a hex with a colony token within range 3. Ooh, okay, there's, so there's a little bit of a downside here. So we're going to take 1 damage and remove a colony token. But hey, this is pretty damn good. I wonder if we have any bottom colony actions. That's what we should look out for too. A couple of tops so far. Hopefully, maybe we get a, a couple of bottom ones at some point. Seems quite good. I wonder if there's any colony tokens that when they like blow up, they do damage or something as well. So maybe there could be some synergy there. That'd be a really interesting idea. Like you have a colony token that's actually offensive. And so that when, if it ever is destroyed, it does like, you know, like one damage to everything around it or something. That'd be cool. Use the colony to attack. Nice theme. Yeah, really good theme. Gives you some like pseudo range as well, maybe. Because of course, enemies will walk through your colonies, but they won't focus them. So if you are clever with where you put it, there's a good chance that enemies just kind of walk on by... You know, you then could do this, kind of get the guy at the back or something, or get the guy from the side. Interesting. I think this is very good. 44 initiative is unusable. Uh, the bottom heal two affect you and all allies adjacent to at least one colony token. You and all allies adjacent to at least one colony. I mean, that's like just extra kind of heal off of the heal that we already had, right? I mean, it's a bottom action. And sometimes you don't really want to do anything with your bottom action, as we've said it before. Like, sometimes it's nice to have things that aren't moves here. Just just the odd few for terms when you don't need to move. As a melee character, though, and someone who cares about retaliate a lot, feels like this character might need to be moving a bit more often than not. So... I mean, if you could get... If you could heal yourself for two... Heal one ally for two. That's four. It's a bottom action. That's that's good. That is that is great value, I would say, actually. For a bottom heal action. So This card seems very, very playable to me. Very, very playable. And it's fun, because it actually interacts with our colonies. A lot of these earlier cards, I'm not gonna lie, I was starting to regret doing this class today. Like when we started to like get into the like some of these early ones, I was like, Jesus, this is gonna be a long stream. <laughs> long stream. You know? This is not they're just not cards that are like seem fun to talk about, you know? Um Whereas this stuff is fun to talk about. Yeah, definitely taking that. You're not feeling very excited for this character? I'm I'm starting to change. At first, I was, yeah, Ellie, I was not into it. But now, if we get stuff like this, it allows us some little tricks. I, I like tricks. If we can get some tricks, I'm down for that. I still feel like we need some more shield. We've seen one card with the word shield written on it, and we've seen, like, the colonies that can give a shield. But they max out at shield one, so... I, I feel like we, if we, wanna, if we wanted to play Retaliate, we need a bit more. Also, I think in general, you're just going to need more attack, non-burn non attack cards as well. So this might maybe an auto include for that. March of Multitudes. Loot one, move one colony token up to two spaces. Uh, well, at least it does something other than just loot one. <laughs> And it's the top, so you could move and and loot that turn. Get a good loot action in a single turn. Moving a colony token so you don't have to play another colony token could be quite good. As you kind of progress, it's going to be a bit of a weird dynamic, actually, because you're going to want to fight around your colony tokens a lot. And so typically, Gloomhaven kind of wants you to keep pushing forwards. 
You know, you need to go and open a door. You need to go and do this. So if you have to, like, every single room, play all of your tokens again, which is, at the moment it's looking like you might have to, that might be a bit rough. Retaliate hater. No, like, I mean, I, lo I love the red guard. I really like the red guard. That's because shield spikes is the perfect retaliate card because it doesn't have the word retaliate on it. It does in digital, but it doesn't in uh, Jaws of the Lion. <laughs> Moving things isn't fun, but sometimes you need to just do it. Yeah, fair. Yeah. If this, if this means that you don't have to waste a turn playing another colony token because it's too far away now. Maybe it's okay. But where's why would you do this over just playing another one? Like a different one, maybe? I don't know. Because you want the loot, I guess. And loot does play an integral part of the game. It helps you get items. Helps you like donate to the temple to increase prosperity. You know, it has a lot of enriching effects by enhancements. So loot is is a requirement to power up your character. So you know, having a loot card for the early levels just to help speed up that loot generation could be quite good. <clears throat> it helps your allies not make money. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's the crux, the crux of the problem, I guess, right there. Can also just be an extra heal one with a B before a long rest. Yeah, that's not really worth that much, though. That's not really worth anything, I would say, really. Um, <clears throat> 37 initiative. Average. You and only you and one ally within range two, maybe for move three. That's good. That's really good. Gifted movement. Big fan. Love some gifted movement. Since playing the Void Warden, I've got I've gotten a new appreciation for gifted movement. I feel like it's a underused mechanic sometimes, and I've been really enjoying it with the Void Warden. So, just being able to give somebody like the ability to just move, catch up, I think is really good. Denny, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub, buddy. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the Adventure Party, my friend. Good to have you here with us. I hope you're having an awesome week. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> Void Warden does gifted abilities as well, unlike the Mind Thief. The Mind Thief, in my opinion, was a massive missed opportunity. Like, hugely missed opportunity. I get that it was like... An, it was a starting character, and also like Gloomhaven, like the abilities in general were kind of kept relatively simple. But the theme of that character is awesome. And yet there are so many abilities that could like that could have controlled enemies, done fun stuff. Like I, I guess like the problem is is that now we're at a position where we're very advanced um, and we appreciate more advanced abilities. So we had to have those early abilities to now gain the appreciation that we have. But I feel like there's real there's so much space for like a mind thief 2.0 that just goes ham on like the control stuff because that's what i found really interesting about the character i was like oh what well, she's gonna like she can like influence people with her mind like she can like get inside people's minds and control them and like i thought that was really really cool and then it's like nah really you just hit things really hard <laughs> oh okay you know <laughs> you know like, i just, really just hit things really hard okay really love the idea of this class i'm warming up to it a little bit more i'm not usually sold on the top ability this bottom ability though is excellent the move three the ending in the hex adjacent to a colony token might be a bit restrictive hard to say but if if we can reliably do this and also like what are these there's a range two right i guess maybe yeah so this could hopefully help out Oh, but the ally also... So what you could do is on your first turn, you could move... So with your top action, 
you could put down a colony. Then with your second action, you and one ally can move next to that colony that you've just placed. Seems like a very simple turn. I guess the problem with that, though, is that the colonies are maybe a little bit low. Like, they're a bit low value. Like, the value you get over time, like, as a single action. Like, but I could see, like, a worse opening sort of turn or perhaps towards the end of a room and you just want to move a little bit closer to the door. Maybe get one up next to the door or something. I think it's okay. Okay. Mind Thief is just a scoundrel, but with more control to you. Pretty much. I mean, the scoundrel... I think she has her own problems. Which is that she's a character that... Focuses a lot or has a, a sub-theme of collecting loot. In a game where... She... Doesn't really need loot. Because... <laughs> she has very few you know, amazing enhancement opportunities. She has a couple good ones. Like, um, of course, like, I think the, the strength on smoke bomb, I guess, but you know what I mean? Like, there's not, like, it feels like, what does she do with the money? She has so much move already. She has great initiative. She has pretty good damage. She doesn't particularly do well with um, armor items. Like, she just gets invis cape or whatever, or leather armor. Like, she just doesn't seem like a character who really benefits from being rich to me. I've always found her to be a, a bit weird. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging you, you to keep your colonies towards the front where they're vulnerable. Well, you, you could use the move free to position yourself in front of it, I suppose. But you're right. Because then it could just get like if you get swarmed by a group of enemies and they're just trying to find every adjacent empty hex to you, they're going to they're going to land on a colony, aren't they? Eventually. Yep, not bad. Maybe, maybe this is for a loot card. Maybe this is okay. I can see this having quite a satisfying little just one turn combo with the make a colony card. Right. Primal Pheromones. Heal five self. Play a cultivate action from a card in your discard pile. Hmm. <laughs> Kamadakan, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. Using your Amazon uh, Prime sub here, buddy. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Invention Pie, my friend. Good to have you here with us. Hope you're doing well. What do we think about this then, chat? Come on. What's MQ going to say about this? <laughs> what, what do we think? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's a very sexy card. I, I, I'm somewhat resistant to the pheromones this card is putting down, you know? I feel somewhat resistant to it. <laughs> Lost heals are great. Yeah. Lost heals, best heal. Hmm. Yes. Um, so this is never <laughs> a good idea to burn a card for a heal five. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Burn the card to damage. I don't care. <laughs> don't do it to a heal five. Never. Just, hey, take five damage, burn a card. If you want, if you want that feeling, just do it that way. <laughs> never, never try and do this. Oh... <laughs> uh. And then getting to maybe play something from your discard pile, which, I mean, let's be fair. There might be some really cool cultivate actions coming up that are like, oh, if we could play that, like, out of position, out of turn or something. I won't completely dismiss this half, this kind of part of the action, because it is like you're getting a free half of a turn. Right? You're kind of getting to play a free top action. Well, we've seen top action so far only. So let's assume they're top action. So you get a free top action. That's like playing a Ring of Brutality, right? It's like I get a free Ring of Brutality, but it's more specific. 
And it's from your discard pile as well. So it's like a ring of brutality mixed with a stamina potion. Couldn't you just long rest and get it back if you need that baddie? I think it's more it's more of a tempo thing, isn't it? It's a tempo thing. It's like I need to we need to go fast. Um, I don't have time to long rest. Let's I need I want to get two out very quickly for whatever reason. Like, for example, both of these these had really big moves on. So I can absolutely see a situation where you use one of them for the top, the other one for the move. And then you go like, you know, big heal. Big heal, whack the other one that you use for the move out in front of you, right? So I could see I could see that. But it's really not worth a burn. Really not worth a burn. I say unless there's some card that comes out that like, oh wow, getting to play like that would be really good. Mm. You can have two of each colony out, so this allows you to rush them in a single turn. Yes. But the thing is that you only can ever get the benefit. You can only personally benefit from one, right? Because if you're adjacent to two, you don't get shield two. You just still have shield one. The way that these are worded is quite important. Like, you and all allies gain retaliate one while adjacent to at least one. Right? You don't get retaliate one for each so rushing them might not even be that good a strategy because well you chuck it down and then a, an enemy walks onto it because you're not you know you're not kind of in that part of the room yet or something i feel like the best thing here is we get two different ones up that would be the best use in my opinion You saw the two minion circles level nine rankings. Yeah, those were like not. Again, like I think I'm quite harsh on those kinds of cards because I just don't think the value is in, in it ever. I, I'm very much like, a you know, I want to play for as long as possible. So in order for me to burn to actually like actively take my stamina down faster, the card really needs to be doing something special. Like, you know, Gloomhaven is a is a ticking clock. The game is just a ticking clock and you need to be working out like how do I beat this clock? And sometimes it is to burn a bunch of cards and go super fast and just be like, let's just kill up. Let's kill stuff because if I can kill stuff really quickly, I get to move on to the next room, which is like we save turns, you know, and there's, you know, burning a card can save you many, many turns. Um, but this does not feel like it's saving you many, many turns. Skipping ahead now. It really doesn't. How many cards does this character have? 11. Yeah, 11. It should be a heal to self reusable. I don't know about the reusable part of that. Like, this is probably the power level here, not this. In fact, I can 100% guarantee that because, you know, whoever designed this would be absolutely aware that heal five self is. A terrible burn like they will know that you know you don't play gloomhaven decide to create your own characters not knowing that heal five self burn is awful so the power level is here so to make this reusable would be tricky so what they've probably just tried to do is they've tried to offset it with like oh well i don't think it should just be this but how do i put something on there that's maybe useful to the players but really they want to do it because of this right because they know that. They, they're not... They, they know how, like, the economy of Gloomhaven actions, right? Um, like... The fact that we've already had a heal 5 self reusable on this character... Well, not, not sorry, not self. But we had a... Oh, was it a self? We had two big heal 5s, right? I guess we had Nature of the Week... I guess it wasn't a self heal. It was the pull one, right? Yeah. But the, anyway, the fact that we've had a heal five, not on self, but we've had a heal five that um, is reusable kind of uh, says volumes, doesn't it, really? So, yeah. 92 initiative, though. This is the latest initiative we've seen. So if this bottom's any good, maybe this could 
this could make the cut. Pull three, range one plus X, target one plus X, where X is the number of your active cultivate actions. Consume either earth or fire to get a mobilize. So there it is. There's the retaliate bait. It's there. That's the one. We've been waiting for it. There it is. Pull everything in. Immobilize them. Whack a bunch of retaliate on. Do your worst. All right. Okay, I'm down. That's good. We've got an actually got like a card that can, can combo now. All right. I'm in. <clears throat> yeah, the immobilized like seems like kind of like, huh, why would you want to do that? Because then the enemies are just next to you. It's because you want them to retaliate. <laughs> you want to proc the retaliate. That's why you want that. All right. Well, I'm, I'm in. This is a bit weird though, right? Oof. I mean, I like the idea of dropping like a bunch of these colonies. I guess, is, is it reasonable here to expect that we would have maybe two? I think it's reasonable to expect you might have two. Also, you don't need to be in range of them. You just need to have them active, right? So it doesn't matter if you're not actually technically in range. It's just your cultivate actions that are in your active area, right? So... Although, of course, that would be what you really want because you'd probably hopefully have the shield or the retaliate one up as well. <clears throat> The red guard immobilizers really makes shield spikes guarantee the damage. Yeah, it's in my opinion, it's an essential tool. Like if you want to go down the retaliate route, the character has to have some way of interacting with um, with ranged enemies. You just have to. And whether that be immobilize, muddle, just creating disadvantage. I think the red guard has a lot of different tools, actually. More tools than most normal characters get, to be honest. It creeps in power towards the end of the scenario when you might have three plus colonies up. Yeah. Although that's a lot of cards if you think about it, right? Three cards in your active area. I mean, I guess as long as you remember to discard them when you long rest, it's not that bad. You just have to remember to, to do it. Interesting idea. Going really late on this is kind of cool as well because you're probably going to choose to either go really late on the 92 or maybe go on it, what was it, the 14? With the other retaliate? So, like, 16. So, that works out. It's good initiative as well. Do you want to go early? Do you want to go late? Does this save this card? Uh, maybe not. Well, is there any other build apart from <laughs> the tank build? I mean, I guess there's more of a supporty build going on. A couple of attacks that you have, but it feels very much that this character is kind of, I am the tank. <laughs> you know? Like, there's so many cards dedicated to retaliate. So many abilities that are dedicated to heal, retaliate, shield. The, do you really have a viable non-tanky build here? You like Vitalia being songs, so it shows that this is great. Yeah. Level one, you don't see me playing all three personally. That retaliate one is uh, and if you have both of the other, then goodbye, your good moves. Tricky. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you remember to discard them with every long rest. So hopefully, it doesn't always happen, but let's say hopefully you can clear a room in one rest cycle, right? You and your buddies. So you're not having to rest mid room. Then I feel like you just get when you want to, you just go, okay, discard them all from my active area, get them back. The colonies don't go away. Those tokens still stay there. Then on your next turn, you can play them again and then you get more colonies on the board, right? Potentially. I think that's kind of cool. There's this kind of like, if, if, if the enemy doesn't like, if he doesn't stomp on your bugs, then realistically you could in sort of two like rest cycles you can have all of your colonies out 
Also, we haven't seen yet the infamous Death Shroud Spiders. Whenever they come out. Whenever they come out to play. <clears throat> you are a tank or a tank support? Sounds like m pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Sounds like the same thing to me, pretty much. Okay. Um, let's go on to level two then. So clad in spikes. On the next ranged attack targeting you this round. Performed by an enemy within range four. Game retaliate for range four for the attack. Interesting. Big retaliate four. Hmm. Big range. Definitely going to hit something. It is specifically ranged attack though. So, you know, if you're in a scenario with a bunch of melee. This card doesn't do anything. Well, top doesn't do anything at least. You think if this is an attack, I'm not retaliate? I disagree. I think that's a bad way of looking at the card. Um, because an attack is like proactive, right? You kill an enemy or you get to draw an attack modifier. Ranged enemies as well. I mean, some, some ranged enemies do have shields, to be fair. So I guess retaliate against those is pretty good. Yeah, that's fair. But I don't think you should see it as equivalent to an attack for range four. I think that's dangerous territory to get into because it it could fall flat. Whereas an attack for range four on 12 initiative would be a very strong card. Whereas this is a bit weaker, a bit more situational. Could be better, could be worse. <clears throat> As a physical player, this makes you dread having to keep track of monster numbers. It makes you glad to be a lazy digital player. Yeah, there's stuff like this. You do have to keep an eye on the standees, maybe. But I mean, to be honest, you probably don't care. Its ceiling is very high. What its ceiling is for? I'm not quite sure. Like, how is the ceiling? Like, are you mean in terms of effectiveness? I mean, against like a living spirit or something? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I guess it depends on the prevalence of the enemies. That's what I mean by like it's I think it's dangerous to, to see it as an attack an attack for range four because it could be much worse than that in certain situations, but it could be much better than that. So <clears throat> I'll ban you from the bonks, Pelican. I'll ban you. Time out. Put you in time out. Stupid forest imp hits you. They are dead. Yeah, true. Forest imps. Good against those. Definitely. Flame demons. Good against flame demons too. I guess like I'm just like, I don't really like taking cards like this at like level ups. Like it feels like an X, an X ability as, at times. Let's look at the bottom. Um... So the bottom is, whenever an enemy causes you to suffer two or more damage from an attack, the enemy suffers one damage. Permanent ability. So it's like permanent retaliate. Retaliate any range, one, but you have to take two or more damage. Kind of an interesting one, because of course, like, you're playing a tank. The idea here is to have so much shield you don't take any damage, but this character does not have that. Also, you kind of have quite a lot of heals and things as well. Like you, you feel like it's so far we've been, you know, we've been, at, we've been shield two, which is shield one, shield two. Which means we're going to be taking damage every time we, um, we get attacked pretty much. If it was for the round affecting all attacks, awesome. But one attack, hmm. What?
If you're going to take damage, you might as well guarantee they take some back. Yeah. I guess the two or more damage thing is a bit like... But I guess that means that at least it's a me it's a meaningful trade. Like, so the game is just ensuring that it's like a meaningful trade. Because, you know, taking two damage to do one damage back is... Kind of like a bad trade overall if you like spent your whole turn doing it but over the course of a scenario just getting that constant value of just one damage one damage one damage like in a single round of play this could be like five or six pure damage to enemies each individual enemy right and then you can have that over multiple rounds of play potentially it's a very interesting one cool idea almost like kind of game breaking in a way maybe feels very like if you can get so much health hmm this is an interesting card i like the way that the top is kind of like you you probably want to keep it for the top because the top is like good but the bottom is also kind of good at what the top does too. Just slower. <clears throat> Infinite range retaliate sounds good, but thematically wise, the name is silly. Oh, your Zara Spikes being shot out. Clad in spikes. Yeah, I guess so. It's always hard to make retaliate feel thematic though, I think. Like range retaliate, like how does that work? I think it's always been difficult to make that feel thematic. I like the idea of retaliate not just being spikes, though. Like, I like the idea of retaliate being more of an attack of opportunity, almost. Like... I feel like a character like the Scoundrel, for example, could have retaliate because she has attacks of opportunity. You just have to, like, kind of shift the thematic kind of feeling for retaliate. A shroud of stingers since it's a harrower. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the bug the bugs get really annoyed, so they fly at you. Like so just like your little your kind of the hive around you, the bugs just like get annoyed that you've attacked them, so they kind of scoot off and sting you. <laughs> With magic ponds. Yeah, magic bugs, right? Magic bees. It's always magic bees. <clears throat> Spice is thematically great on regular retaliate. Range retaliate, you really got to try and work it in. <laughs> Top's very nice and the bottom has potential. I feel like the bottom is probably where... Well, the bottom is like maybe a bit more of the all-in way of playing, but I, I like that. I like the idea of that. I like the idea of being a bit more all-in. Hard one. Good card. 12 initiative as well feels obviously really good for this. But also could just be used as a move too, maybe. Right, the other level two is Steel Silk Weaver. Immobilize, range two, target three. All targets suffer one damage. There you go. Nice. So there's something that could really work very well with um, more retaliate. And it's very, very similar to some of the sickles from Red Guard, right? The sickles did stuff like this. Do one damage to everybody around them. I think the fact that we've only got one card that guarantees retaliate right now, which was that X card that we had with the immobilize. I say guarantees. Guarantees if they're at least attacking. Um, this could be just necessary. And we did have a move to retaliate on the bottom, right? This guy. 26 initiative. Hmm. 26 initiative. Immobilize a bunch of things. Move into them. Retaliate up. 
Or just run away from them if you really wanted to. Use it as just control. <clears throat> hmm. Um, I think I'm digging this one a bit more. I do like... It's a difficult choice, actually. Hmm. But I'm digging this ability because it's just versatile. If you wanted to go in for the retaliate damage, you could. If you wanted to just kind of like lock some enemies down and kind of have a turn off, you could do that too. Like it's got like a nice dual purpose. Whereas this doesn't really, it's quite singular. Like it's quite narrow. Good, very good, but narrow. And this as well, like you kind of need to be attacked, right? So it's kind of like... Whereas this just feels like the good Gloomhaven action. Maybe that's a bad trap for me to fall into here. Not bad. Range 2 isn't hampered by disadvantage because no attack. Yep. And everyone gets a bit of damage as well. Three damage on the way out as well. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, 41 initiative is pretty poopy though. Heal 1 affect all adjacent allies. Regenerate. Immobilize. Oh, wow. So, we're going to heal all of our allies. Regenerate them, but also immobilize them. They're going to love you for that. Um, ward. Affect all allies with the mobilize. What? Could there be enemies without? Oh, so I guess if you had some kind of immunity to immobilize, you couldn't get it. This is a bit weird. Why it specifies this. I guess if you were immune to immobilize, you could kind of get around it. Maybe that's why. Seems like that last line has no range. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's a great point. That's probably why it's there then. Because in theory, you could have allies who are like other side of the map and who are immobilized and they would also get ward. Interesting. <clears throat> mm. You'll take this one over the other one, mostly for the top. I, I feel like... At least this card is not... It's got two okay actions. I think this is probably... I mean, at the end of a room, this is not bad, right? And regenerate can can really add up. It's actually nice having a bit of extra extra regenerate. Hmm. Probably probably generally a bit weak though, I would say. Generally a little bit underwhelming, but it is a bottom action. Probably couldn't be too crazy. Yeah, this is tough. Very tough. Honestly, my gut feeling is that this is just the better... The best ability going here. But this seems like the most fun. So take that as you will. But I feel like this is probably... The most flexible and efficient action. Whereas this is probably the most fun. And this also will just slay in certain scenarios, right? Initiative breaks a tie for you. Yeah, initiative's al that's always a really good way of doing it. I've said that before too. I, I honestly feel like if you ever ever in doubt, just take the one with the you know the earlier initiative, because at least then you can use it as a move too if you ever get really stuck of what to do. You'll take the first to play with the bottom. I feel like it might add up over a scenario. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of in intrigued about too. 
it's gonna it's also got that feeling of playing plague herald too right because in plague herald if you're playing a uh, baneful hex it's so satisfying when enemies are just like i'm attacking you oh don't do anything take two damage like it's got that feel to it it's got that vibe and that was always fun so just like enemies just be constantly just taking damage from you like you could just be wandering around and like yeah try and hit me and then they try and then they take damage like it's so fun and this one is a bit more obviously a bit more fair a bit more balanced not quite as uh as op as that but it has that kind of vibe to it which i quite like and also it's a bit more unique for a tank to have this versus like some other tanks that you might play like it's a fairly unique ability like of course the other guys can retaliate and shield and what have you but they don't get this kind of unlimited range kind of ref reflect you know retaliate sort of thing so yeah it's quite good <clears throat> um okay level three maddening chatter retaliate three affect one ally within range three muddle one xp it's a big amount of retaliate there's that muddle as well you need that muddle so again that muddle will basically ensure that you can get ranged enemies here to to trigger this so that will give you a much much better chance and and, and it this is an all-in-one solution as well, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about playing another card to make it good. If you play the top of this, you're gonna be doing you're gonna be doing good, right? Oh, affect one ally. Oh, sorry, I completely mis misread that. Don't know why I read that. I I just read that as retaliate three, range <laughs> all enemies in range three get muddled. Okay, I completely misread that card. Yeah, no, I completely misread that. You're right. All right, I don't like this card now. <laughs> uh, I read what I wanted to read, okay? What I wanted to read was Retaliate 3. <laughs> Muddle everything at range 3. <laughs> That's all I wanted to read. Card did not say that. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh... Seems like why you can't target yourself. What? What? Well, you mean? So you're 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 targeting an ally with retaliate three and muddling them at the same time within range three. So it's a support. It's a support action. So you're giving an ally retaliate three, having to muddle them. is one XP. The bottom does what I want, I think. Well, because the top here doesn't... Again, it just doesn't really play into... I mean, I don't I don't think it does play very well into what it wants to do. Maybe they are long resting in a bad spot. Well, then they probably need to heal, not a retaliate three. Like, because they're going to have to take damage, right? Unless, of course, like, I guess... Because the thing is that the enemy attacks you, you have to take the damage to reflect. So, like... Even if you were to like go, oh yeah, but you might kill an enemy. It's like, yeah, but I still have to take the damage first. And burn a card or so. I only feel like this ever works in a situation where you've got a guaranteed tank. Like you've got somebody else who is the tank and you're literally just following them around. Like this is why I felt like my job as a Void Warden was a lot of the time. It was just to run around and go, here's some extra shield, Mr. Redguard. Thank you. I'm off. Like... It's supposed to retaliate, Mr. Redguard. Thank you. <clears throat> you guess the idea if someone is going all in on a tanking around, they're using a top retaliation shield so model doesn't hamper them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's absolutely it. You would do it, you would do it to somebody who's playing a non-attack action that turn, for sure. <laughs> if they're in a bad spot and gonna get slammed, just have retaliate to make your ass beating less painful. I mean if you die though, you don't get to retaliate. <laughs> yeah, this this I think is not good, actually. 
I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is bad. Kind of just bad. With specific strategies, can be good. But I feel like those specific strategies, just a bit too flimsy, a little bit too like, what are we doing here? If you're playing solo, this is the kind of thing where you might go, oh, I've got this meme build I want to play where I get retaliate up all the way up to, like for example, play this with lightning bolt and use lightning bolts, um, spiked armor or whatever it is to double all of the retaliate you get for a round and just have an incredibly like meme -y party where you go around just killing things with retaliate. Like I've done that a little bit. Obviously not, this would be a, a much bigger way of doing it, but I've done that a bit on, on Guildmaster and beat, we beat the final boss of Guildmaster playing that way for a laugh. So there's fun things you can do, but a reliable card, this is not. Um, this is not a good level three card. The top, no. 29 initiative, move two, muddle, target two adjacent enemies, move a colony up to two hexes. This though, hmm, this could save the card. Because again, muddle, making sure that they don't move away, the enemies, moving a colony token, so getting that to come up towards you to give yourself an extra retaliate or shield or heal, whichever one you choose. Keeps the colony tokens moving. This I'm okay with. This feels like one of those kind of like role-playing type actions. Doesn't feel particularly glamorous when you just look at it. So it makes it hard to pick. It makes it hard to pick a card on the strengths of an ability like this because it's like, yeah, whatever. But actually, if you're in this scenario, something like this, just being able to go, just keeps you moving. Keeps the wheels turning, right? Keeps you retaliate, triggering. Just good stuff. So, might be enough to save it. We'll see what the other card is, but... You'd muddle a teammate for one XP. <laughs> All right, maybe it's not completely useless. Maybe not completely useless. All right, let's have a look at the other level three, because that one was weird. Weird. Uh, violent Outlash. Attack three. Consume fire and earth for plus one attack. Just two hexes. Then we're going to do attack three, consume earth or fire to get pierce two and attack two things in a straight line. Okay, so. Magical Christmas land type situation, right? Three, four. So four, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 damage. PS2. You know, you could, if they if they have got shield, then obviously you're, this attack is going to suffer a little bit. Obviously, it's two different targets as well. One of them could be the same, but the second one's going to be different. That also feels kind of bad. You think the previous card needed to model all adjacent to save it? Maybe. This card's now very attractive. The bottom of this card. This is a big top burn. Um, an attack that... To be honest, if you're not... If you don't have both elements up to consume both... You know, either way we want to do it. If you don't have both elements up here, I don't think it's a particularly great burn. Although saying that, maybe the PS2 is a bit irrelevant. So you could in theory just do this. The PS2 may or may not come into play. Um, but if they do have shield 2, then one of these guys is maybe a bit awkward. I guess you could, in theory, attack two different people, then turn around and then attack two people like behind you for these. But again, it, that just feels like really weird positioning to me. Like I'm trying to think of like, when are the enemies going to be in this in a pattern where, oh yeah, I've got two living spirits stacked like this and then i've got two just like hounds or something you know like where, where's when's this happening just try to figure it out like just feels very odd mm. 
yeah, it can be two, four totally separate targets due to the pattern rotations. Yeah, exactly. Which makes it feel like, yeah, that's really flexible. But also, when is that going to happen? <laughs> It's an interesting pattern. Weird patterns aren't, per se, any less accessible than regular shapes. I don't think that these are pretty common patterns, to be honest, for play, right? It's just you know, cleaving, strike, and skewer. That's all it is. This is. It's very, very simple patterns to hit, but it's the point of getting both of them together on different targets, because then you would need them to go, like, this way or this way. Like, I don't know, or maybe behind you, or I mean, maybe, but it just... I don't know, it just feels a bit odd to me. Interesting idea. But also, sometimes you just want to destroy one enemy really quickly, right? With a big burn. <clears throat> you wonder if it can enable you to attack the front enemy twice if you target a rear enemy for the second attack. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, you could target this one, right? And then just target one behind it the next turn. Or this one, one behind it next turn. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it's just, it's a big burn. It's, uh, I didn't like, I didn't like these, this at level one. I'm not going to like it here either, to be honest. Even though we've got 11 cards, so I think we can absolutely support the odd one. If we are going to be going down more of a tanky route, then you might want to have one of these in your back pocket. I don't know if I would waste a level three on it. Thankfully, though, the bottom of this card is very good. Very, very good. So we don't have to worry about that. We can just play it when it when it comes up, right? Move three, immobilize, target all adjacent enemies, create either earth or fire. Simple, effective. Um, although I feel like this could still do a very similar effect right i'm moving a colony token i get well actually to be fair do we how much do we need these elements how much do we need these elements really with like the tanky build I don't think there's one like consume earth for retaliate right yeah and i guess we got a couple of fires retaliate um fire consumes which are pretty good We've got this, which is move three. We've got this, which is move three. Make it anyway. I don't know. I might be tempted to go for the other one because it's actually got okay initiative too. Well, I say okay, 29, I guess. Hmm. I think at this point in time, I'd probably see how I felt about like how valuable this was to me. If I felt like, oh man, my game would be so much easier if I could just move three a little bit more often. Not move three, sorry. Move a colony token a little bit more often. And if that was the case, hmm. like, oh, I just can't, I keep leaving my colony tokens behind. I just can't quite keep them with me. I can't keep getting the value out of them. And I feel like this would be the pick. Because both of them have pretty so-so top actions, but this is actually at least at least a way to kill some things. This is really very bad, I think, outside of this very specific build. I think that's what I would do with it. You mean hit two first time, then second attack, hit one of the ones you hit, and one behind him. Gotcha. This has gradual upgrades, element, immobilize instead of model and move three. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very close. I think it's very close. But really what it's going to come down to is how valuable is this? And I don't know. I think it could be quite valuable. If you don't, if you want to, if you want to keep these, these suckers actually out in your active area, not having to play them every time, then you're going to need to move them. Right? It's like a playstyle consideration. If you're not putting them into your discard pile to then play them, because you want to just like, I mean, you probably should because it'll extend your stamina, but 
you know? It's also a way that then you can play them for their bottom actions sometimes instead. It's sad that you're essentially choosing two similar bottoms in level three. I will say that for me, this might be one of the worst level ups that we've come across in these videos. I mean, I've got a hazy memory, so maybe there's been similar ones that haven't been as very satisfying, but it feels like they're just... I mean, this is good for, for the build, for the Retaliate build, for sure. We'll see. Let's forget about it. Onwards to level four. <laughs> we'll put that behind us. Okay. Here we go. Right. A new Fire Spitter Ant. Bonus. To place one Fire Spitter Ant colony token in any empty hex within range two, you and all allies add plus one attacks or your melee attacks while adjacent to at least one Fire Ant. Cool. All right. Create fire as well. Nice. So there we go. We have like a little bit of an attack buff here. It is only your melee attacks. Which is a little bit more limiting because you then have to be adjacent to both the colony and the enemy, right? Whereas if you are like doing a ranged attack, you can just kind of like park yourself next to the colony and just be like, pew, pew, do your thing. Whereas this you're actually going to have to like be very careful with your movement because you have to be adjacent to both. Which means that there'll be certain enemies where they like wander off and you're like, god damn it, I can't get that plus one. So again, moving, moving your colonies could be quite important. Could be quite important. 58 initiative, rubbish, but that's fine. We've got plenty of other cards we can pair with it. Destroy one colony token and perform attack one wound. Targeting all enemies adjacent. Now there you go. That's a good one too. Nice. All right, some fun abilities. I guess... Oh, we never looked at the perks, did we? I forgot to go over the perks. Should we quickly go over the perks now? Let's go over the perks now. Okay. Replace one minus two card with one minus one, but place one colony of your choice. Hey. One colony of your choice on empty hex within range two. I mean, that's good, right? Free colony. Granted, you have to have the... Um, you know, you have to have the card up in the active area to get the benefit from it. But this could be a good way of you, like, setting up. Be like, cool. Now, if I play this one, I'm going to have two. And we can place them here and here. That's quite, quite a nice idea. Hmm. That one seems pretty fun to me, chat. I like the idea of that one. Remove two minus one cards. Nice. Remove four plus zero cards. Okay. Place one minus one with one plus two model card. Well, that's just a slam dunk. That is a three damage swing right there. Um, replace one minus one with one plus one poison card. Slam dunk. That's a plus two. Place one minus one with one plus one wound again. That's actually maybe three because of the wound effect. Add two rolling plus one immobilized cards. Yeah, I mean, immobilized has some good synergy with this character, so sure. Add one rolling heal one self card and one rolling shield one self card. I like my shielding to be a bit more reliable than having to draw off an attack, but sure. Add one retaliate one range three card. Again, same, same situation for this. You're probably trying to kill something, so... Add one plus two something card what is that what oh fire fire or earth it's a plus two make fire or earth card okay it looks really weird here planted in black and white ignore negative item effects and add one plus one sure if we need to be a tank ignore negative scenario effects where and add one plus x where x is the number of active cultivate action cards yeah, so-so. Pretty strong, I think. <clears throat> Pre-Frost David, a hybrid event. Symbols are so awkward. Yeah, that was... 
I thought it was like a new, I was like, oh, do we going to get a new ability later on? It's like this symbol. Like, nah, I had to zoom in. It is just that. I only really work well for Divina because dark and light. Well, yeah, because they're like similar shape, right? Both being circles. Worked well just to split them in half. Add, put them together. Looks fine. Pretty good perks, but doesn't attack a ton. I mean, we've got we've got lots of like attack threes. Like we had the rain, sorry, the the target threes. We had a lot of target threes and stuff, didn't we? Early on, like we had a we can we can draw some modifiers. We can definitely draw some modifiers. I don't feel like this is a bad attack modifier deck. We can get rid of our minus two, which is nice. We can get rid of all of our minus ones, which is nice. But I guess we could potentially put another minus one back in. Uh, we can get rid of our plus, a lot of our plus zeros, which is nice. So definitely weighting our deck a little bit more. I think you can reliably expect here to draw like a plus one or better. A lot of the time. A lot of the time. You can reliably expect to draw plus one or better a lot of the time. <clears throat> Lots of replace and rolling. Final mod deck is going to be slim reliable. Yeah, I think so. You can, you know what you're going to draw. And you're going to be happy about it. Like generally speaking. Lex is acting up again. Do I skip rolling plus one immobilize? No, I think I did. Did do that one. These are pretty good. You can get four of them too. So actually, you can have a bunch of rolling towards the end, right? So that's like two more. So that's four. Eight. Ten. Ten rolling modifiers. In a deck that's probably going to be about what? 10 cards itself? <laughs> Pretty good. Hey, Kappa. Have we already talked about the extended help this character has? You find that to be really interesting about this character? Yeah, we did talk about a little bit about it. It's got an insane amount of health. And it's like they've made them like a bit of a less a less durable tank. In terms of like giving them less shielding abilities, but on the flip side of that, giving them more health to kind of offset that. And of course, also because of these potentially having to take damage through your colony tokens as well, is like a little bit of a downside. So yeah. Ridiculous amount of health at level nine. I mean, look at that. The dials don't even go that high. Right, so I feel like the... Um, I feel like the health... Sorry, the health. I feel like the perks are actually really good. So on this bottom here, we can probably reliably expect that we would do something like an attack two, maybe attack three on some people, get the wounds... That's a strong reusable card. Obviously, at level four, we're not going to be fully perked out at this point. And so we still might have the chance of drawing something not so great. But we're generally, we, we can really hone our deck. So these types of, of cards are pretty good. Do we want to be strengthened on this character? I don't really feel like strengthens is really even necessary. Like advantage. I don't feel like it's particularly necessary. The only downside to this is that you do need to obviously have the token in a good spot. But this being a bottom action does mean that we can immediately play like a colony top to just blow it up, right? Like, very simple. Put something within range two, blow it up. One, one turn, early initiative. Job is done. Job is a good one, you know? So... I like this. I like this one a lot. I feel like I'm going to... I think you're always going to gravitate to this type of thing. Looks like we got another... Potentially another one here. Yes. All right. So the other level four is a late dispersion. A late dispersion? Not sure if I said that word right. 
Place one Rockspine Termite Colony token in an empty house within range two. Great Earth. This one is you and all allies add muddle and push to all of your attacks while addition to at least one of the termites. Hmm. This feels more of a utility one. Obviously, the muddle is quite good for your retaliate stuff. So you'd probably decline the push, but want the retaliate, want the muddle, maybe. Or maybe you wouldn't necessarily decline the push. Pushing stuff into traps is, of course, nice, but you don't always have traps. This feels a bit more situational. A little bit less reliable, not quite as good. Yeah, I, I think this is, like, just fine. This could have been a level one, and I probably wouldn't have blinked an eye, to be honest. If it was, like, maybe muddle and push one, and it was a level one card, I would have been like... That's fine, you know? Doesn't feel very powerful to me. Oh my god, this bottom. Okay. 58 initiative. Rubbish. Just like the other one. Destroy one colony token. You and all allies that were adjacent to the destroyed colony token may perform move forward with jump. One XP. Ooh. Hey, yeah. That's pretty spicy. Really nice, actually. Really, really spicy. Man. If you wanted everybody to just, like, move into the next room, get out of a scenario quickly, whatever it is you need to do. This is, like, high-level Void Warden stuff. Like, with the bottom of, um... Is it Into the Oblivion or whatever? It's like you move three and then everybody else can move three, too? It's that kind of level. But it's much earlier, like level four. Hey, Alakabeza. You have more than 200 hours in the game. You can be watching my guides. Here's a question. On a Mind Thief, you say you never found much value for Submissive Affliction. But what if you pair it with Withering Claw and add two status on single attack? Let one you remember that there are even more cards to add statuses. Wouldn't it be a viable build? Um, The problem the problem with, um, with Submissive Affliction... I, mean, I do feel like I was maybe a bit harsh on it. On my, it was one of my earliest guides that I ever did, the Mind Thief. If you looked at my original Mind Thief video, I have done an updated one since, but... Um, I always feel like that particular card... It's adding damage when you could have just used the Mind's Weakness, right? So, like, you could, you could use Withering Claw to give somebody... Um, was Withering Claw the one that gives poison... No, Muddle. I can't remember. Muddle and Immobilize. Uh, muddle and Poison. But anyway, you, you, the Mind's Weakness just gives you a plus two buff. And that's the problem. Because you'll spend all of that time trying to apply status effects to make it good. To then being like, man, I should just really have been playing with the Mind's Weakness. Like, it would have equated to similar, if not more, damage. Yes, there are other ways to add more things to it. Like, so, for example, like, when you get to a higher level, you get um, other cards that just have, like, innate... Um, other attacks that have, like, innate poison and things like that on them. So, I do think it is... There is a bit more upside to it. But the problem with it is that you have to drop cards because you only have so many cards you can play. So, as you level up, you're going to have to drop cards, right? And I would much rather keep a card, like, a more of a toolboxy card around... Something like Fierce and Blade, for example, which is a really good toolbox card because it allows you to push enemies away into traps or if they have Retaliate, because my thief sucks against Retaliate because you want to do little and often. Like you just want to attack three times in a turn and the enemy is just like, ha, I have Shield 2 Retaliate. What are you going to do about it? And you're like, no, I'm just going to cry. So Fierce and Blade like has a lot of value for that kind of stuff. Um, so I think it's ultimately it's because there isn't really enough space you you could you can definitely make it work um but i feel like it's like probably the slightly weaker way of playing on overall but i'm sure you could probably find maybe a more complementary group that could help you stack that damage a bit more the problem as well is that poison and muddle i'm sorry poison and wound are the only two effects that persist multiple turns so of course if you muddle and immobilize then that could wear off before you get to do your submissive affliction so 
realistically, it's quite hard to do that. Stun is maybe one that you could also bring into the mix, but the thing is you don't usually want to be attacking the stunned target. You usually stun something so you can ignore it and then you go after something else. So stun usually doesn't come into the mix either. It's just a bit of a weird one. I do think that there's, there is more... Um, there's more potential there, certainly. I haven't explored the, if it's full potential, but I just feel like oh, it's, it's a really hard card to like squeeze in what is already a really tight kind of set of cards that that character has. I find it hard to just put um, Empathetic Assault in. Like people like, you know, once you want to put Strengthen on the bottom of Empathetic Assault, people jam that card like crazy. But you have to like drop, you know, really good cards to have that in there, you know? <clears throat> you like to late dispersion when you played it? Interesting. Well, hopefully that um answers your question a little bit, um, Alakabeza. I'm glad you enjoyed the guidance, dude. Appreciate it. I'll tell you what, though. I will make one final comment on that. The new changes to the solo items. When the solo item DLC comes out, the change to Psychic Blade, which is the Mind Thief's item, which now gives you a plus two attack to every augment that you play. So when you play an augment, the attack that's li listed on the augment is increased by two. Does leave a little bit more creative space there now. So perhaps give it a go when that comes out. See if you can maybe make something work with that way. Because then there's definitely more of an argument for saying, hey, could we experiment cycling our augments a lot more? So maybe, maybe, that, maybe then's a good time to check it out. Um, okay. So, yeah, my, my initial opinion of the top of this card is that it could have been a level one ability. Almost. Maybe a little bit less push, but this probably could have been a level one ability. A large part is it allows allies to enable retaliate for you. Yeah, I suppose so. It means you don't necessarily have to play it. That's fair. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm in. If you've got like an ally who's like doing a ranged attack and just like hitting like three things all with muddle. You can mitigate a ton between Muddle and Shield 1. Yeah. Okay. I still feel like it feels a little bit meh, but I, I I can see that. I can see that now. The fact that the it's really more of an ally thing than it is a you thing. Which I guess is a little bit different to the other ones because the other ones felt a little bit more like you. I guess apart from the other one that we've just seen. But yeah, that's fair. So the bottom is uh, the same one, right? Destroy one colony token? Yeah, yeah, we've already done the bomb. Tough choice between these two. I mean, as a person who loves to do damage, I mean, I'm going to probably end up going for the damage one, I think. This could just be a bunch of move for everyone, though. Hmm. Difficult, difficult choice. Damage is always the correct choice. I mean, usually. <laughs> For me, it is, yeah. For me, it usually is. But then this character's a little bit weird. Like, it's a bit weird. It's a bit more unique. Still waiting on the death spiders. Oh, they're coming. 
You know, sold on the bottom of the ant one. How many enemies are you hitting with no movement? Empty hex, then around that. That are enemies surround, but don't. So, I mean, well, the thing is that you want to you want to play it. You want to play it with it, right? I, I don't feel like this is one. I mean, you, you could, in theory, play an opportunistic one. But I, I see this as like a single turn combo of just let's get a bunch of wound on it. You play like one of the ones you don't really care about. And then you just go to town. But you're right. This may often this might this bottom might only be like target two. It's not going to be as good as something like unstable upheaval or any of those, you know, uh, explosive punch. You know, it's not going to be quite as good as that because it's going to be harder to have that um, that perfect positioning because enemies are going to fill those spaces. They're not going to um, leave themselves a gap. They're not going to nicely surround it necessarily. Yeah. <clears throat> Drop a call in the middle of a batch of mobs, then detonate it. Yeah. I think. I think it's. That's like the ideal situation, right? I know that like you might pull that off every now and again, but this will often maybe just be like attack three people, two people for an attack one and win, which is a bottom action. Destroying the colony is take means you take a damage, which is probably not really that much of a downside, really. But it also means obviously that's not there to give you a buff for future turns. So it's interesting. Too, too much setup for the move for you, Expressionless. So here's the thing, right? With this. I feel like with this one, I am much more likely to be like, play the colony, immediately detonate it. Do Hopefully do a bunch of damage, right? Whereas this one feels much more like Hey, everybody, let's just make sure we're around this colony by, like, the end of this round. Like, can everybody get adjacent to it for the next round or something? And then you just kind of do it. Like, this one feels a little bit more like... I mean, you could, in theory, do this exactly the same, play it, and it would be easy to do, much easier to do. But it also just feels like... Maybe a way to just, like, keep propelling yourself through the scenario? I don't know. This plus one damage buff is, of course, going to be generally better than this, but maybe not because it's much more it, like it's really hard to judge because, again, like muddle can help you save up quite a bit of damage in the long run. And obviously your allies can get an easy benefit of this, really. It's very easy for your allies to use this. This is a quite specific, like I said before. You need to be adjacent to both this and the enemy because it's melee attacks only. So, how are you going to do that without the colony being stepped on? Feels a bit more difficult. I don't know. This is a hard choice at level four, I will say. Neither of these two is like screaming at me, really. My, apart from the fact that I usually take things to say... All en anything that says targeting all enemies generally just I like, auto pick, but I don't know. If you're playing more of a if you so if you're playing a retaliate build and you're really like I want to play retaliate, then possibly this might be the right pick. But if you're playing like a hey, I just want to uh, oh, hang on. Oh, one thing we should probably check actually is what these guys do with the other halves, right? So this guy was So this guy was the shield one. So in theory if you had both of the persistence up for the termites, you would have shield one and you'd have push two and muddle. The other one was the fire ants, which would be retaliate one. So the other one is attack one melee and retaliate one, right? I guess the shield one and the push is mu and the model is much better synergy. Much, much better synergy. Yeah. Actually, if you wanted to play like, if you want to have two active cultivates, I felt like the other one's better because you then you'd have model push two and you'd have shield one. 
Like, that's brilliant, right? Gives you a lot of um, survivability, I think. Hmm. All right, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm starting to move more towards this one. <clears throat> you depend if they're both in play, they stack? Yes, I think that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, my assumption too. Yeah, which is why... You think that's why it's strong? Yeah, I think that's... That's the better combination. So maybe you just kind of like, you know... Just uh, rock spine termites for life. <laughs> Disregard ants. Man, who needs fire ants? Who needs fire ants when you got termites, huh? Interesting choice, though. Right, level five. Birthing chambers. Place one ghost chamber B colony token. Yeah. Create either earth or fire. Nice. You and all allies adjacent to at least one B may at the start of their turn perform a bless self. Okay. That's pretty nice. Not for you. You're, this character feels like you have a lot of... Um, low, low, like, small attacks, right? <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. But you do have a couple of big burns, which maybe if you flip to bless, you'd be really happy about. Couple of big attack burns. But your allies will thank you forever. Just stock up on blesses. They really would thank you a lot for this. This is definitely one where you could like chuck it behind you. And like, you know, you just got like a range damage dealer chilling back there, just thinking, thanks. Thanks, bud. Bless those attack ones here. Hmm. Bottom, heal five, self, regenerate, poison. We're getting flashbacks. Oh, we're getting void warden flashbacks. So here's the here's the weird part of this card, right? It's got regenerate and poison on it. So Regenerate would remove the poison, but I guess if you were vulnerable for that round, it would be bad. So in an ideal situation here, you would go super late, heal yourself for five, regenerate poison, then on the next turn, go super early. So then the regenerate would remove the poison, and then you were basically just, there was no downside to the whole transaction. And then you're kind of good to go, right? So, if you time this well, it could be really good. Or you just need to be safe. Right? You just need to be safe. A risky heal. Yeah, kind of. You just need to play it at the right time. So, 61 initiative is not the right time, I would probably suggest. So, unless, of course, you're at the back of the room. But if you were to say, I don't know, pair it with... I mean, oh, the thing is, we didn't have very... Is this like our latest initiative apart from 92? Come on. I swear we had like a high 70. Yeah. Okay. Maybe go like this to big heals. Big healing turn. Range attack turn. Uh, might be a bit tricky. Oh. Step in the front. Gone too far in front. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's a really it's a really fun heal. I'm down for that. As somebody who has a huge health pool as well, you're definitely gonna want to you're gonna, you know, you're gonna need like big heals are gonna have a good effect. You know, overhealing is not really a problem for you, or you know. Healing above your max is not going to be a problem for you. You can kind of sit there and just take a bunch of damage for like two, three rounds and then just do a bunch of big heals towards the tail end of a room, maybe. <clears throat> this gives us poison for the attack with the poison bonus. Oh, yeah. 
I said it, and I was even on the card. There you go, I found it. <laughs> I said it at the time. There you go. 73 initiative. Heal yourself for five. Regenerate poison. Heal you no, no, because then you would heal yourself for one. Remove the poison. Do an attack two with poison. And then hopefully have this. I don't know. From previous turn. Sure. And then you got to regenerate there. Give yourself another point of heal on the next turn. Oh, lovely. Big heals. Really cool. All right. Well, that seems like maybe maybe a little bit like cute, but it's only two cards. I guess you'd have to survive a round of play though, because you'd be on lay initiative maybe. All right. I I like this. I think that this is obviously a very supporty card, but this also just has some inbuilt synergy then. And to be honest, this is probably better than this. In the long run. Like, not initially, but over the course of a scenario. Somebody hitting some big blesses could really come in clutch. Okay. The other level five is burrow under. Move three, jump. All right. We were saying we maybe wanted some uh, a move top. I said move tops. Keep an eye out for them. We got a lot of good bottom actions. Lots of good bottom actions. Move three, jump. Attack three. Target one enemy. Move through with the move ability. Consume earth or fire to get plus one attack and muddle. Mini trample. Burrow under with the jump mechanic. <laughs> well, in it, thematically, in this case, you're going underneath than, than rather over the top, all right? Jump it achieves the same thing. Just thematically, you're going under rather than over, okay? It's an upside down jump. Yeah, exactly. They should have just inverted this, right? <laughs> Just flip this. Done. Everybody's happy. I mean, this is top top move. Top move is always good. And potentially an attack four with muddle stapled onto it as well. Then allows you to like do like like you could do some shenanigans with this now. Mobilize a bunch of stuff, run away. I sense shenanigans. Shenanigans are afoot. I mean, very, very versatile. Definitely want to consume an element for this. Yeah, I think so. Plus one attack on model. That's quite a big uh, swing. Quite a big uh, improvement to the action. Right, the bottom. Well, we've got the word invisible written here. Invisible, immobilize, target one enemy within range three. Invisible, immobilize, affect one ally within range three. Oh, two players. Where are your two players at? Finally. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we had cards that are like nah not really good at two player nah this is really good if you play the game at two player nah, it's like yeah it's good but if you play the game at two player it's not quite as good made for two player oh one's an enemy it's not even you I misread the card again no invisible oh you don't go invisible Oh, I see. I totally misread that card again. This card, this character is throwing me so much. Oh, so you're so an enemy is going invisible, but they're immobilized. But then an ally is going invisible. What? I thought it was going to be fun. I thought it was like you were going to go invisible, your ally was going to go invisible, but you both be immobilized. So you just have to sit there. 
I was like, that's fine. We both just long rest. OP card. Oh. You have to figure it out. That's funner. Yeah, but it's just like if you make an enemy invisible. That's. I mean, that blows. Because you can't attack them. I mean, I suppose maybe you don't want to. But. What is an, uh, what is an extra benefit here to making them invisible? I'm not, I'm not seeing it. So thematically, you're burying an enemy and an ally. Yeah, I guess you kind of are. Making an ally invisible for a round seems okay. Although saying that, there was... Um, like, Triangles had a card that did that, and that was never played. So, like, it never made it into that character's kit, really. The bombard projectiles to hit them. Surprise synergy. I guess so. Uh, that, does that target though? Probably targets. No, because they're attacks. Yeah. Reminds you of a Star Slinger card. Yeah, they have something like that as well, right? Invisible, but like a real... I guess it's... It's trying to make it... It's trying to make trying to make invisibility fair is really it's been really interesting to see a lot of the Crimson Scales characters kind of approach it in different ways. Like, yeah, we want you to have invisible, but only if you do these certain things. Because invisibility is just abused to open doors and stuff, right? So basically, what we what this does is says, okay, I'm gonna make you invisible and immobilize you. You can't then run off and go and open a door. Like you'd have to go and open the door. Then I could make you invisible. So it's a bit more of like an active effort to make it do the same thing. And then you'd have to be within range three of them. So there's like a... It's interesting. I like the way that like just people are messing around with invisible to try and make it fair. You know, both the changing of the actual rules and just how they're like tagging on little kind of like caveats or extra things to them to try and make them like how do we... Keep this more fair. Can you still do this ability if there's not an enemy within range, but there is an ally? Yes. Because of um, these dotted lines. That separates them. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an interesting one. Level five, I feel like. Mm. Twenty two initiative. I think I'm drawn more to this than I am to this, but honestly, the, the I felt like a big problem with this character. Is that you get all of these, like, abilities that just feel like maybe they're just necessary. Like, I would love to take the fun card. But again, like, I'm looking at this and I'm going, man, that's a lot of heal. And this is actually, like, pretty legit. Like, you can just make either of the two elements that you want. And your ally could just sit there and just take bless for a couple of rounds. Like, I mean, come on. If you can give, if you can dish, dish out, let's say, four blesses during that time... Especially like if your if your teammates like long resting, right? If everybody is long resting, and you you have eleven cards, you have quite a lot of cards in your hand, right? Potentially they're all long resting. You can just go right. I'll give you a bee colony. There you go, guys. Everybody get a bless. Do their long rest. Then on the next turn they start their turn. 
Get another bless. That's two blesses. Each. Easy. If you time it right, not hard to do. You like Burrow's top overall, but you think you want to play with the bees. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. I think I want to play with bees too. I like honey. I'm getting in that honey. <laughs> All right. Well, interesting one though. I'm kind of excited to see when these... I think we're going to get into spiders soon. Spiders soon. Destroy two colony tokens. Bane. Target one normal or elite enemy adjacent to either destroyed colony token. When the targeted enemy dies, place one colony token of your choice in the hex that enemy occupied or any empty hex adjacent to it. So target one normal or elite enemy adjacent to the either destroyed Bane token. Okay. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. When the targeted enemy dies, place one colony token. Oh, that's good. Okay, so Bane, for people who might not know what Bane is, Bane's a new thing that came in with the Frosthaven rules, I believe, but a lot of um, kind of um, uh, like Crimson Scales characters have adopted a lot of the new terminology. Uh, so Bane is what's kind of essentially replaced kill abilities. So kill abilities being everybody kind of agreed was a, were a bit too strong. They kind of skewed the game a bit too much. So there may still be kill abilities in Frosthaven, but... They're kind of like they've they've changed it now to Bane, which is basically that the enemy will take 10 damage at the end of their next turn. So it gives them a couple of turns to take actions. Then they're going to take a big load of damage in one go and hopefully kill them. So it's trying to like kind of nerf it a little bit. Um, obviously, this is incredibly strong. Um, on a character who can outlast many other characters because they're giant health pool the shields that they have, the retaliates, the heals that they have. Like, it doesn't feel like this character is really going to struggle to, like, just stay, stick it, you know, stick around for a couple of extra rounds. So Bane, you know, letting, waiting for that to tick down is not going to be a huge detriment to them. You've got a few control abilities to maybe control them as well to stop them from acting while they're still sort of sat there with their Bane. Then being able to make any colony token of your choice is pretty nuts. Because you could just put an extra one of one of your actives, or if you're planning on maybe playing another a different one next turn. Maybe you could put that one out preemptively. Like, seems very good. Now we're talking. Yeah, I like I like this one. Destroy two colony tokens is more of a penalty. That's true. You do definitely like. It's not something that you can play like when you open a door, right? Because the 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 enemies are gonna need to be near them. Also, this le this also lends itself a little bit more to the whole idea of moving colony tokens. Like, maybe that is more of a thing that we need to worry about. Because these guys have got to be adjacent to one of these. That might be tricky. So being able to move a token next to them, then play the top of this, seems quite good. I like it. I think this is fun. Feels very much like a top. Like kind of like a top of a build type card. You know where like you're just cycling these colonies around quite a bit. Really benefits you at this point in time as well. Because you're going to have potentially like the perk that allows you to put another colony token out. Like, you should be able to get a bit of like colony kind of economy going if you like. <laughs> yes. Try to get more and more colony tokens out faster, quicker. So here's a here's a good example of why maybe that heal card would have been quite quite good. That heal five, then do a cultivate action from your discard pile, because that gets you another colony token out, right? So maybe for this kind of effect, it's worth it. Certainly good in a heavy colony build, yeah. Yeah, definitely agree with that. There's a lot to do with this, I think. A lot of, lot of uh, potential. A lot of potential here, but there is a very real drawback. And it's not going to be like the easiest thing to trigger. 
But you've got push, pull, you've got things you can do. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to get this to work for you. 50 initiative, terrible. Bottom, whenever you kill an enemy, perform a heal free self. That has a permanent ability. Oh, permanent heal free self whenever you kill anything. Well, that's, that's pretty, that's something, huh? That's something. Certainly those retaliate trades don't seem so bad now. Like an enemy hits you, takes like four retaliate damage. They die, you heal three. GG, well played. <laughs> you know? Does that count as you killing it though? Yes, I believe it does. <clears throat> the dot there yeah you can strengthen yourself every time we i i do feel like this character isn't one that really wants strength though like i mean you sure every character wants strength but i mean like i don't think it's going to be a big deal breaker for you because you you your your deck is very reliable by the end of it it's crimson scales good Wondering whether you should start a campaign with friends on TTS. Well, I haven't actually started my own um, campaign of this yet. I've got my physical copying coming quite soon. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to stream some of my physical games of Crimson Scales once it arrives. Um, but I can attest that the characters are good. Like there's, generally speaking, I think there's maybe been like one character that I was like, nah, I'm just not, don't care about that character too much. That was the bright spark. Just wasn't really my jam. Just didn't really, wasn't vibing with it. Every other character I thought there's at least something here that could be fun to play with. So um, a lot of the other characters as well, what I say what they do is they kind of advance on the Gloomhaven mechanics. So like, for example, the, the Hierophant, the Hierophant is basically an upgraded version of Saw like take some of the mechanics that Saw has, but kind of goes to the next level with them, which is really cool. Um, Hollow Pact is basically Cragheart, but like juiced up and changed a bit. Um, so there's a lot of like, just really good ways as well that the characters have like changed in certain ways to make them just like a little bit better. Like Artificer as well, a character that I feel like has really taken the Tinkerer to one extreme, which I really like. So there's like, yeah, I mean, I feel like um, just for playing the characters, I think you'll have fun. Whether or not you find the campaign really like, you know, enjoyable in terms of like the the story, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but I would say that the characters look fun. <clears throat> it's Crimson Scouts Isaac approved. Yes, um, he actually made a, um, a statement fairly recently, I believe, because uh, of how many copies it sold. He was, you know, he made like, he was sort of approached, I think, for an interview about it, or he sort of spoke up a bit about it. And he said, yeah, it's been, he's always been like, he put all of the Gloomhaven files out for people to use sort of freely to make their own content, like on purpose. Like he was like, he wanted people to have the ability to do that. He's never been about, you know, gatekeeping everything, but of course it's not an official product and it's not for profits. Like the only thing he kind of asks is like, hey, you guys aren't making money off of this because, of course, it's his intellectual property. So, but yeah, it's absolutely approved. Not like, appro it's approved as in like he says like, yeah, you guys crack on. It's not approved in the sense like he has played all of the characters, all of the scenarios and said, this is great. Because Isaac has said before, I don't know how he feels about it now, but I remember um, a while ago reading a little blog post by him or something saying that, he generally doesn't like to play other people's characters, like um, community-made classes, because he's very aware that when he's trying to make classes, he doesn't want there to be like some, you know, similarities in like he's grabbed something from somebody else, grabbed a mechanic from somebody else and made a class. Like he's always wanted that to be something that he wants to kind of keep with himself. So he kind of avoids going into that stuff too much because, you know, there's, he, he doesn't want to like, you know, pinch some, or, or be accused of pinching someone's mechanic because maybe he's played it and he thought it was good and then makes you know, a, a character around that. Does that make sense? 
kind of a long-winded answer there, but hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> he hasn't really looked at any further than that, just we're allowed to make it. Yeah. yeah. You like this bot? I think this bottom is... How many enemies are we going to kill, though? That's the thing, right? This is like that kind of weird situation with the... Um... With the Shadow Walker, right? From... Sorry, the Death Walker. Shadow Walker. Same thing. <laughs> Shadow Walker, Death Walker. Death Walker and her shadows. Um, she had that whole condition originally where she would have to kill an enemy to make her shadow, right? And everyone was like, it's just too conditional. And is this another one of those sort of situations where like, oh, wow, yeah, of course we, we can heal three, but... Are we going to be the one landing the final blow a lot of the time? I mean, we are, like, retaliating and shielding up, which we're doing a good amount of damage, but... You know, if you've got, like, some ranged DPS god sweeping in from the sidelines, just going bang, 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 bang. Is this going to end up sitting there? And then oh, at the end of a scenario, it's like, I got six heal from, from that. Could you not have just played like, you know, one of your other you know, guns? Also, how much heal is too much heal? Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> hmm. You missed the beginning. What do colony tokens do and how would you get them? So colony tokens are played by the cards. Right, so the cards will specifically reference you get to play them. You get four different um, uh, um, sort of colonies. So you get the ants, the termites, the bees, the spiders. Um, so you get two of each. So you can have a maximum of two. They go onto the board. They are um, they're like overlay tiles. So the tile is still considered to be empty. Uh, if an enemy, well, if anybody was to walk onto that hex or walk through that hex they would be destroyed and you would take one damage. Like they stepped on your mound. They won't be focused by enemies. They're just sort of there. And they just give you buffs for being adjacent to them. Or you can blow them up and do different things. But So yeah, you have to play, you have to play your abilities basically to get them. Difference is healing isn't isn't a core mechanic we need, just one. Hmm. I feel like it's the for me, it's the it's the kill thing. We are probably gonna kill things through retaliate, hopefully. But also we burn this card. Does this end up being just a big heal burn? Is this like the big heal burn that's trying to trick me, chat? This is like the, well, what if we made Energizing Tonic a bottom permanent effect? Is this like, is this like Energizing Tonic in disguise? Is this Microbots? Dressed up in a trench coat. <laughs> Is this trench coat? <laughs> Microbots? Is it? Could be. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> That's why the additional HP, because you're constantly taking damage from destroy. Yes, and, and also because this character um, kind of approaches tanking in a different way. So instead of giving the character like loads of shield abilities to just mitigate, you know, you don't take any damage because you have shield. Instead, they just gave him a bunch of health. Instead, just have a crazy amount of health. You have a little bit of shield, but just have a crazy amount of health. So use your health as your buffer and then heal up. But yeah, or also because of the colony thing, that's also part of it. It's beetles in a pile.
It's sort of like a shield persistent. Mm, no, because that's more that's active. This is I would argue this is quite like quite passive healing, really. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's always nice to get like, oh, I get an extra bit of heal. Like, that's always nice. And you're always gonna have use of it. And little and often is always better than a big one shot. But what I'm saying is, is that this is this could end up being like in some scenarios you could just be like really unlucky. Don't kill anything. Not the way that you're playing. Not your knight. Could do nothing. Could, could do nothing. <clears throat> could do nothing. Yeah, if you retaliate kills an enemy and you heal, it's almost as if you had shield. For yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I said. Like initially, I think it's it's a good um, it's like a good kind of tweak on that mechanic, but you need to be killing things, right? Whereas the shield would not need to be doing that. You just get the benefit. Okay, well, let's have a look at the other one. I think that's an interesting... That's a, that's a really interesting level 6, though. Both the top and the bottom. So, Frantic Migration. Move one colony token up to four hexes each time the colony token enters a hex. Perform. Immobilize. Target one enemy adjacent to the colony token. Ooh. Hello. Eight initiative two on this card, huh? Latch a Bane, wait for it to kill a thing. Colony pops the next one to step, gets Bane. No, you only get one one version of Bane here with the top of this. So this would be, you destroy two colony tokens, then you Bane one target. Then you would get like one colony back. So then you'd need to kind of like play another colony and then you could maybe play this card again. The only reason why this is here is because of this. To remind you to place the colony token. I, I, I assume that's why it's like that. I mean, I think, like I said, I, I think moving colony tokens, we've been underrating a little bit so far. So. And this could like move one, could zoom it across the map. Immobilize a bunch of stuff, allowing you to move up to it. Also, could just put put it in a really good position to like detonate it, right, with that bottom attack that we we had. Or it's annoying that these are both level sixes because it would actually be quite good at trying to position for this. But right, there you go. The bottom is teleport to any unoccupied hex adjacent to a colony token. The next time you suffer damage this round, suffer no damage instead. Again, good with the moves. Good with the move colony tokens. I feel like the problem with this, though, is that the colony tokens are always, like, range two from you when you place them. And you also want to always be adjacent to them. So I'm struggling to see why you would really want to teleport here. Like, I, 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 I like suffering no damage is quite nice. But probably not massively worth it. But the teleport here will, will mostly equate to, like, a move three jump. Am I wrong? Move four jump, maybe? Maybe a bit more if you've managed to get a colony in a really interesting spot, but... I guess how this would be quite good is on a scenario where you need to, like, travel and then come all the way back. You could, in theory, leave a colony token in the first room and then just, like, zip back. So in scenarios where you kind of, like... Like, if you've got, like, a central room and you're having to, like, go off to, like, different rooms off of that central room, you could always kind of nip back to that central room. So there is, like... I guess in certain scenarios, it could be really good. <clears throat> this enables the blow-up bot attack one wound. Yeah, it does. Very nicely. 
How do I feel about the master mobilized on the top? I mean, it's great. I mean, this character wants a bunch of... I mean, the CC that we get is immobilized, basically. And that plays well into, you know, two two ways of playing, really. It plays well into damage avo avoiding <laughs> entirely. Don't want to take any damage. Um, so you just lock enemies down. Or it immobilizes ranged enemies for you to walk up and make sure that they have disadvantage for your retaliator as well. So, you know, it's got a dual purpose for this character. So, like, yeah, mobilize is always good. Move three with a colony that turn. Yeah, I guess if you were to play a colony as your top action, it could be a move three. With kind of jump, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I Like this this here, I think is... It may sound really good, but actually... Practically, it's, it, it's not often going to be much more than a move three with jump. And then... On the odd scenario, it's going to be really good because you can just jump to the end of the scenario or jump backwards and forwards between rooms in a really quick way, which could be very fun. So maybe a bit more of a situational bottom. The suffer no damage thing is, qu is quite nice. It's always good to just get a freebie. You still think the persistent heal is good, but you probably take this for the bot. Bane is one hell of an ability, though. But it's a big investment, huh? Big investment. What I like about this, though, is it kind of lets you filter your colonies as well. Little side benefit here, right? Let's say you have... Um, let's say you're, like... You're playing, like, I don't know, bees or whatever. And then you're like, no, I want to go to termites now. So you could destroy two colonies and then you could put... A termite colony out. Destroy two bees. Put a termite. You know, you can filter your colony tokens in a way. Which is kind of cool. That, to me, like, gets my brain kind of ticking along. You know, kind of itch. Scratches an itch. For this kind of thing that I, I, I like to have. Like, I like to play characters like that. I like it where you're like, oh, I could do this. Like, that just gives you a really interesting line of play. Potentially at some point. You know what I'm like? I like to get to like the end of a room and be like, oh, like in a tight scenario and be like, okay, how can I figure out how to win this? And you're looking down at your cards. So I just love cards that just have like weird interactions where I'm like, cool, well, I could do that and do that because then that means that I can get this out. Then I'd have this out. And I could do this. Like, I really like that. I really like kind of trying to find like a weird, a weird route through a scenario, right? Like a weird path to victory. And this kind of card kind of speaks to me. Like, yeah, that like I feel like I could look down at it in my hand and be like, this can this can solve some problems. I just need to figure it out. <clears throat> You're gonna take either? Play two times and take the other next time. We'll see. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. It's only a move three, no damage on first attack on eight. Is that not good enough? I mean, it is good enough. Absolutely. Like, but what I'm saying is, is that like, I feel like the teleport part of this is maybe a little bit misleading, but you're right. If you boil it down to the base levels, but then do you really want to be making a decision at level six on a card because it's a good value move on a good initiative? I know there's this too, but you know, it's a fairly, like, run-of-the-mill ability, isn't it? Fairly run-of-the-mill. This feels interesting to me. But again, you're going to have to have built to, to, to get this. You're going to have to be expecting to make colony tokens. Yes, you do. Well, of course you do. <laughs> Absolutely fair to fix a level card based on good move, low initiative. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, so am I. Like, if, and sometimes when I'm playing deadly and stuff, like, sometimes you just gotta do it, right? Sometimes you just gotta do it. Okay. 
Level seven. Stalk the prey. Cultivate. Spiders. Spiders. Place one death shroud spider colony token in any empty hex within range four. Create earth and fire. Both elements. Two element generation. Each time an enemy enters a hex adjacent to at least one spider, that enemy suffers one damage. Yes. Spider colonies. Isn't this what I said? I think I'm pretty sure pretty sure I said that this is I hope one of the summon one of the colonies does this. Pretty sure I said that. I mean, I like it. I like it a lot. Double element generation seems quite strong. Like, really great. I mean, you've got a couple of... Um, a couple of your big burns require both, right? Or you could, like, use one on the top. Use one on the bottom. Bottom is insane. Two ranged summons. You're sold. It's like two thorn shooters. Okay. Summon two Ven Venator Tarantulas. Venator. Two health. One attack. Three move. Three range. Immobilize and poison. Ooh, baby. Two XP. Ooh. That attack one is not great, but I mean, it's similar to you though. Like they're drawing from your, your deck. You got, you got a pretty consistent deck. And that poison, that's going to add up. You know, the first one attacks one thing, poisons it. The second one attacks the same thing. It's going to get you know, an additional plus one on its attack straight away. And then from there on out, they're just sort of like getting that kind of plus two attack, really, most of the time, right? Oh, yeah, the Death Drive Spider is also range four. Good point. Let's get started with that, with that other one. It's a good point. It now is actually the teleport is looking better now. Mm. The attack one becomes attack two with poison. Yeah. And the immobilize as well. Let's not disregard that. Immobilize on a stick. Just enemies are constantly going to be immobilized. When we were talking earlier about um submissive affliction on the mind thief, this is the kind of thing. Where you could be like, oh, maybe we should bring submissive affliction. Like, you know, you could maybe start flirting with it because you'll have just two summons on the board adding two negative conditions every single time to whatever they're attacking. Easy. Like, that's when something like submissive affliction might be starting to be worth being played because you are getting like some really cool synergy with, with the other characters on the board. Spiders are going to lock enemies down. Yeah, I really like the theme of the spiders just like engulfing things in webs and then they just can't move like you're just stuck that pip on spiders add to their range so you can either add to their move or add to their range you reckon range i think range would be the safe bet for safety however However, if you want them to be adjacent, well, do you really care if they're adjacent to any of your colonies? I mean, which one would you really care about? The blessed one? Guess it would be kind of funny. Just keep blessing yourself through your spiders. I'm just wondering that if you make the... It's a bit like the thorn shooter. Not the thorn shooter problem. It's the, um, the healing sprite. The healing sprite problem. So with healing sprite... You increase the range on that summon. It then often doesn't move and doesn't find range for the heal. So it's like weird. Like you don't get the heal. It's odd. So you have to be a little bit careful with stuff like that. Like, so if we were to increase the range, would that then mean that they like, they don't move with us, with our colonies? They just like chill. And I don't think they necessarily need to be next to them. Like really the blessed one is the only one that they would really benefit from. Muddle push spiders. Oh, I guess the muddle would be good too. Yeah. Immobilized push as well. Oh my god. 
That's actually pretty disgusting when you think about it. So they would they would so the spiders would have muddle and push two. Immobilize poison muddle push two on all of their attacks. That's disgusting. That's actually disgusting. How would the enemies ever beat that? And then what the, what the spiders would do is they would then like move a little bit closer, hit them again, push them even further, move a little bit closer, hit them again, push them, like just push them out, out of the room. Just push them to the back of the room. Oh man, you really do want to keep these next to that one, actually. That's a really good point, chat. That was a very good one. The bottom's kind of OP. I think you're probably right. I think this might be a... I mean, this is level 7, but... I mean, there's two levels to go. This feels almost like it could be a level 9. <laughs> Does feel like it could be a level 9. Seems broken, yeah. How are you keeping these next to your nests without them accidentally destroying them? Summon AI is summon AI. Well, if you're playing in physical, you're going to have choice of ambiguity. So hopefully you can just get a lot of ambiguous situations. That's what I would fight for. If you're playing like in digital or whatever, yeah, you're screwed. But like hopefully with ambiguity, you'd be able to avoid that um, a fair amount. <clears throat> Spitting Cobras has met its match. I think this is arguably better than Spitting Cobra. Yeah, better than Spitting Cobra. Because to be honest, if one of these guys dies, just one of them on the board is still uh, annoying enough for the enemies, right? But you got two of them. Probably too complex, but thematically, figures with flying shouldn't destroy colonies. Um, yeah, thematically, I guess you could say that they're flying over them like they do every other type. But I, I, it's also probably a balance thing. It's probably also just more of a balance thing. You're assuming this will get errated? I mean, I would... Uh, I don't think so. I don't know how long this... I mean, this character's a fairly newish one, right? I don't know how much playtesting has been done. But this, to me, seems like it would absolutely dominate... Just dominate the board. Like, ridiculously. Just completely dominate the board. It is one of the oldest custom classes. Okay. It just happens to be one of the add-on ones. Okay. Imagine if you control your summons. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just have to play a character that can do that, right? Or gift extra attacks or anything like that. Some I mean, imagine being the summoner and it, like <laughs> being <laughs> this in your party. Like... You wouldn't even play any of your own summons. Well, I guess you play Thorn Shooter. But then you'd just be using these. <laughs> like, thanks. I'll take them off your hands. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take care of these tarantulas. It's fine. <laughs> hey, Iron and Wine. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. It's been a great three years. How you doing, buddy? Do you think it's a really strong summon? You're just not sure about expecting these to have nest bonuses. That's fair. I think it's it's hard to tell until you get down to actually playing. Like how often these colonies get destroyed and how often they are annoying. It's really hard. Which is why I said like perhaps maybe we're undervaluing the move ones. Because they will allow us to kind of sidestep maybe some of those problems. I don't know. That's why, like, maybe the move colony actions are actually being undervalued a little bit right now.
<laughs> You're naming the spiders burn earlier. Things are going to get sticky for enemies. Okay. Um, yeah, very good card. Moving on. The other level seven probably has absolutely no shot at comparing to this card. This could be one of the best cards ever printed. So, <laughs> um, Lacerating Horde. Destroy any number of colony tokens within range three. For each colony token destroyed, perform attack four, range four, poison. Nope. Ah. Oh. Nope. <laughs> I mean, sure, you might... I mean, like, what? Magical Christmas land, you destroy... Six? Because you had all of the bees, all of the ants, all of the termites. You wouldn't have any... Um, any spiders yet. Because you'd pick this at level seven. Why have I moved down again? I moved the camera up. Why is it doing that? I moved it up. I actually, before the stream today, repositioned this. Why has it gone back down? Oh, I know why. Because the bonk's repositioning it every time. That's why. Thanks, everyone. It's because the bonk, the bonk repositions the frame every time. Damn it, bonk. Ruining everything. Coming in here, ruining everything. That one worked. Wow. See, that one's fixed. What is it? Not even to pop a boss? Well, you'd have to have, like, you'd have to say hello to the boss. You then probably have to spend about 12 turns for getting colony tokens out. <laughs> I jest a bit. But considering that most of the time you only get one token out at a time. Still feels like a lot of setup, right? Yeah, not a fan of this one, I'm afraid. Pass. I mean, at least it's next to a card that's ridiculous, so... Retaliate 2, range 3. This is actually a super sweet amount of Retaliate, though. Look at this. Retaliate 3, range 5. That's kind of nuts, though. I mean, it's not two spiders that instantly win you the game nuts. But it's pretty nuts. That's very, very strong. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage. That is a whole heap of damage, Phil. Retaliate 3, range 5. Ooh. All of your retaliate dreams come true. Oh, this card is like one turn of spiders attacking. <laughs> Sad, but it's, it's, it's almost true. It's sad. If you don't want to take the OP spiders because they're too OP and you want to be tacky, then this is strong. Yeah, I mean... This is a really good ability, so... But they're not two spiders that will... Like, you could almost... At this point in time, with these two spiders, if you did manage to get that model and push thing going as well, you could almost just play whatever cards you wanted and just sit there and just let them win you the game. Like... I mean, you, yeah, you'd still have to do stuff, but, you know... In, in theory, they would be doing... A full, a full mercenary, well, actually more than a full mercenary, right? 
these this will be doing more damage than some of your buddies who were there being like yeah i'm helping i'm doing some damage and you're like well my two spiders are just absolutely destroying everything and um that just feels really rough i guess against something that's like big shield they'd struggle they'd struggle against big shield any kind of ranged retaliate as well like off of a fire a flame demon they're gone so do have to be a little bit careful even with the push, they might end up... I mean, I guess they could push them out of retaliate range, but they'd have to be careful with that because they have a really large retaliate range at high level. Can you show the other range summon of this class? There is no range summon other one that we've come across. This is the first summon full stop. Unless there's another one that we get later on. Maybe that's up here, like level 9. When we, when we get to it, I can see one more summon. Looks like one more summon kicking about. So anyway, easy choice... It's, it's Stalk the Prey. It's big spiders. It's spider card. Plus, it's the first time we've actually seen the spiders, so you got to do it. Hey, everybody. Future MQ here. So one of the benefits of uploading these to YouTube a little bit later than the stream is that if something changes between the stream and obviously the YouTube video, well, I can make a comment on it. And Stalk the Prey is a card that we were quite critical of during the stream. We thought that it was very, very powerful. We thought it warped the character around it. It may be kind of just sort of like disregarded a lot of what the character was already doing with like colonies and things like that although potentially there's some really great synergy with that push colony so we just felt like it was really too strong potentially the best summon i've ever seen in the game really so it was really um yeah it really warped the character and it definitely warped our discussion from this point onwards now after the stream i was contacted by wilting moon who is actually the designer for this class who sort of watched the stream watched the vod and uh kind of came back to me and said yep yeah, these are all like very valid criticism criticisms of the card and it'd been a long time since he had actually sort of play tested the class he had sort of finished the class quite a while ago it'd been completed and uh, yeah it was just kind of like there was no uh, work kind of ongoing at the time but the stream actually caused him to, to think again and he thought yeah you know I've always thought that that card was maybe a bit too powerful and uh, yeah this is some good good opportunity here now to maybe address that so he's actually come out with a different version of the card which I will post sort of up here now on the screen for you guys to see and the main change here really is it's gone from being a ranged summon to a melee summon which is much more balanced ranged summons are just incredibly powerful in gloomhaven because it's usually quite easy to keep them safe and they just keep giving you incremental value and of course having that immobilize on there as well means that the enemies aren't going to be able to get close so there'll be certain scenarios maybe with just lots and lots of melee type enemies in and these guys will just run the show so really good to see that they're now melee so that they could still get hit themselves there you can keep them alive now but you'd have to take damage on the amber aegis which is a bit more thematic to the huge health pool that the character has so just some really good changes here and it was really awesome to just have you know the designer of the class kind of contacts me afterwards and say hey like i really appreciate like you know the feedback on it and you know everybody's talking about the card and yeah i want to i'm going to fix it you know i, I really want to uh, make a change that i think would, would make it better and made the change so if you did pre-order uh, crimson scales the first and the second print run i believe that the printed versions will still be the old version of the card However, if you have pre-ordered the Trail of Ashes, which is the expansion, I think that that's going to have a copy of this card, which will be the replacement copy, essentially. So look out for that. If you do play on Tabletop Simulator or Print and Play, of course, then those files should be available fairly soon. I don't know exactly when that's all happening. Like, this is all a little bit hearsay. I don't know 100% if these things are happening, but that's what I've heard from other people. So yeah, but I think it was really awesome that us as like a community and just chatting and, and, and giving some feedback on the character enacted some very real feedback so that was awesome and it was really cool of wilty moon to sort of yeah revisit the class and make a change based on um, on everyone's impressions so yeah awesome so i wanted to point that out because we were quite critical of the card and it does shape our discussion for the rest of this um for the rest of this video and i do feel like even with these changes these summons are still very strong still really well um still well positioned to be very good and still could use those push things but you're gonna have to put a lot more effort into it it's not gonna be so easy and just handed to you on a silver platter like it was when they were ranged so we will see but yeah so i just wanted to make a little statement here inside the video so that we know that that, that that's now changed and so hopefully in the future if you're starting to play this and you see this video uh, later on down the future you won't even need to worry about this because you'll be playing with the new updated version coordinated infestation so level eight attack two range three all allies in the targeted area suffer wound consume fire 
to add wound. Okay, so all allies would take wound, but we could also give enemies wound too. Okay, if we consume fire. Create earth. I mean, it's fine. Oh, hello. All right, I think we found the card though. Um. Yeah. It just seems weak, right? What, what, I mean, what's... It just seems really weak. Comparatively, like, to what we've just seen. <laughs> Not like in general. In general, obviously, attack two, like, wound on four things would be pretty good. But... I don't think this is a very real drawback. I think you can easily avoid this. Yeah. With your with your flips, you could maybe make each one maybe a three or a four. I mean, it's good damage. Just seems a little bit a bit a little bit anticlimactic maybe. The bottom here though, I quite like move five and shield two. The initiative of forty five though doesn't work very well with this at all. So you're gonna have to play an early initiative, but you've still got some like big retaliates that were early initiatives back um, previous levels. So like this is the the this is. The first time we've seen shield outside of like our level ones and X's, right? I think. Maybe the level two one had shield on it. So shield's pretty rare for this character. But being able to just move five and shield ourselves up for two, it's really good. Watch this. What's this push stuff we're talking about? So one of the. Um, I'll briefly go back. Very, very briefly go back. Uh, where is it? This one? Oh, that's a level one card. This one. This one. This one. So one of the one of the rock spine termite colonies, you and all allies add muddle and push two to all of your attacks while adjacent. So you can in theory give the spiders muddle and push two if you uh can get it all synced up right. Yeah, like I feel like this, like the shield two is going to do wonders for you, so. But really poopy initiative, really bad. Alright, what's the other level eight? Erupting mandibles, attack two. Target all adjacent enemies, nice, good words. Create fire, consume earth. All targets and all adjacent allies suffer one plus X damage, where X is the number of active cultivate actions. Again, what's that about? What's that about? Like, I mean, at max, you probably have like two. So this is going to be like three damage, maybe. I mean, it is quite a lot of damage, I guess. You may be looking at something like two to three damage to the enemies. Pure damage plus an attack two on top during a plus one. Yeah? Is it better than this? This is a bit more flexible, maybe, because of the range? Probably is better than that, though. <clears throat> Don't mean to be negative now, but it speaks volumes that are level 8. We are prioritizing the only... Summon the character has instead of colonies. Poor design. I think it's a it it's maybe not necessarily poor design, but poor placement. I will say this. And I, I'm not a huge fan of this. Like, where are we? Where's the image? You know, right from level one, we can see the death shroud spiders are a thing, right? Okay, death shroud spiders. Cool. All right, we see these guys right from level one. No clue what these guys are. Like, okay. like you, I guess you could flip through your cards if you wanted to check your level ups. But, you know, we don't get to use these guys. And then the first time they come up is adjacent a ridiculously broken, like, summon. Right? The first time that they appear 
is next to something that is so wildly better than what it does. It's like, why do we even have these tokens? Now, I don't know if we get another one, but like s sneaking a little look ahead doesn't look like we get another spider colony token. So like to make it so that there's like one component in the game to just do one of these and it doesn't do anything else, I think... I don't think you can say it's poor design, just why put all of the spider stuff together. You put all of the spider stuff together, that's it. Spiders not showing up five is one of your biggest criticisms. I mean, like, we spend the entire game like, oh, the spiders are coming. Spiders are coming. <gasps> spiders. Oh, this is just better. Okay. Like, I don't know. I think that that's a very valid criticism, Shane. I think that's very valid criticism. The You've been building like this mechanic up about all of the colonies and stuff. And then maybe you get a touch of the, oh, let's just make strong stuff. And I've said this before, and it's one of my pet peeves with characters. It's very easy from like level seven to level nine to just print broken good attacks and be like high level gloomhaven you know so easy to do and so many characters lose sight of what they do from level seven to level nine because it's like you run out of ideas and you're like well i've kind of we've kind of done the, all of the mechanics for the character now what do we do well we need to do something powerful all right well let's just do a stun three things wound and poison okay sounds good you know um <clears throat> the colonies appear fairly mare as well one of the uh, he, I think that's relatively fair. And then and, and, and I think maybe like shield one's always going to have pretty decent value across the entire thing from level one. Retaliate one is was maybe weak right out of the gate. The heal one I think is okay, actually. Like I think that that's fine. Um, but it's, it's the same. It's the same problem as with Saw or with any of these kind of characters, right? You, intru you introduce all of the mechanics. Here, even the, um, the Hierophant has this problem. And again, I don't necessarily feel like it's a problem. I don't think it's a... It's, it, I think it's a problem with the game system just as much as it is with character design. Although, like, you know, you maybe could get around it with some character design. I feel like Gloomhaven is quite restrictive. And so, like, at level one, you have... You create a bunch of cards and you create a mechanic and you have to introduce that mechanic. And you have to make that mechanic fun, good. And you have to make it so that a lot of those, especially if you're using some sort of outside cards or mechanics. So here a fan using outside cards, or if you're using um, like p persistent buffs like this, right? Something that's like a persistent kind of buff. You have to make sure that it's not too powerful to ruin level one gameplay, that you're just like running around the place, just wrecking it, but not so weak that it becomes irrelevant. And that's really tough. And I feel like Gloomhaven just saying, well, you get two cards at every level up, like that's the way it works, it does actually really restrict things. And it would be nice, like for example, there to be like, oh, actually at level five, you unlock another couple of cards that add into your core mechanic. So the Hierophant would get two new prayers, maybe, that would add to their prayer deck, right? Something like that. Or maybe you would get like, the, you would get the Shield 2 version of your um, thing. Stuff, stuff like that like just to kind of keep these things feeling a bit more relevant without wasting a card choice on them because i still feel like you need those two card choices to help push the depth the builds forward but i like i mean people like to play with power and i, and I will say that it's also it's a little bit of a it can be a bit of a cheap trick right you know cheap thrill Let's play with the power level. Like, who doesn't like killing things? Who doesn't like 
you know, winning scenarios handily, being the hero in the party that's running around doing all of the good stuff, right? That's why, like I've always said, Night Shroud, great character to play, horrible character to play with. The person playing the Night Shroud is having a whale of a time. They're running around doing everything. They're having the best game of Gloomhaven of their life. You're sat there going, yep, everything that I do is much worse than what you're doing. <laughs> right? It's like... <laughs> And yeah, like, it is it is a bit of a cheap trick to just go, here's a bunch of powerful stuff from level 7 to level 9. And, you know, considering that we haven't had this before, this really should have been introduced earlier on, and it probably should have been on a different card to this. Also, putting this opposite it nullifies this cool build, which is, like, I feel like this fit. The problem is this fits in any build. This fits in literally any build that you are playing. Doesn't matter. I could be playing hardcore super retaliate shieldy build. And I would still do more damage probably over time with having these two spiders out. So there's no reason for me to pick this card, right? That's the problem. It's just too powerful in its own right. Just... Yeah. <clears throat> You stand by your earlier comment, Ellie, not a favorite character. I think that there's some really good things about it, Ellie, but I'm not like... Like, I think, like, Shane really kind of... He, he put it in a very good way, which is that, like, there are just a few dis decisions here and there that have actually kind of hurt the character rather than helped it. <clears throat> you know? Sometimes you don't want to give everybody all of the big powerful stuff. For example, like this as well. Good example. We haven't really had that many attacks, right? And now suddenly at level 8, we're just getting a very good value attack. This is really good though. Like obviously on, on brand with our character. So I'm all about this. This is fine. Um, this one as well, again. Although at least this one does play into this. So I will give... I will say like actually this does play into the the mechanics of the character so i'm okay with this one like i think like this one's actually pretty good like yeah it's a big attack but at least it's a big attack that hinges on your mechanics rather than being like yeah we're just making an attack for do this you know like you actually kind of have to play for it so that's good what if there's anything is much weaker than mandibles the top attack is alarmingly powerful but in an engaging way yeah 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 for sure and like move five retaliates to self is good. Honestly, I would have loved if this was flipped. So the shield was on this card. But then I feel like then it would be a slam dunk. Very, very simple decision. But probably still is a relatively simple decision. Um, this class has a weird balance with teammates. It gives them good buffs and heals. But also is hampering their movement with immobilize and colony tokens they can't step on or through. Yeah. This, this character could make board positioning a bit awkward for everyone. And even yourself. You play Cthulhu and with an eclipse and you're completely mad the whole time. Just always left for dead, Ellie. Yep. Yeah, that's what it is. Playing, playing. And then they should really... And, they, and I think they've learned from that. And I think that in the future, we will see less characters like that. You know, it's, it's a power level thing. But it's also just like about how that character interacts. Like, Gloomhaven is still a cooperative game. And it's not healthy in a cooperative game to have characters that are just like, nah, just do my own thing. Don't really worry about it. Don't you worry about that. Like, they kind of trivialize that element of the game. You know, ultimately, you want to be there chatting with your buddies. Like, hey, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Hey, can you handle this? Can we do this? What should we do this round? Like, it's part of the game. Okay. Anyway, I feel like that was enough of a rant for those. So for the level 8s, I think we can all agree that Erupting Mandibles is the stronger card overall. So level 9, here's that, here's that other summon. Suffer damage equal, so divide and conquer. Suffer damage equal to half of your current hit point value. Round it up. Okay. That's a lot for you. Right, level 9, we're like... Boom. Jesus. Okay. I mean, 
we might not be at full health though, right? But still, it's a lot for us. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. Okay. Summon uh, Beta Aegis. Health X, move three. X is equal to the damage suffered. Oh, so we're like splitting ourselves. Nice. I like that idea. Bit of like soul siphon going on here. 16 health on this bad boy. 16 health summon though. Pretty good. At the end of this summons turn, you may play one card from your hand and immediately perform the top action of the card as if you were this summon. What? That is like incredibly thematic. Wow. Like for the whole hive mind thing, I actually love it. You may play one card from your hand and immediately. So you just get free ring of brutality every round? I mean. Doppelganger? Yeah, kind of. This is going to mess with your stamina, man. I mean, it's good. It's really good. But this is going to mess with your stamina so hard. Plus, if you play this, can you even afford to play spiders? It'll be 11, 10, you'll be down to 9 cards. And you'll be playing an extra card every single time. So you're playing three cards around. You need to rest in three turns. <laughs> Interesting. Just go ham in the last room. But then to get the most amount of health out of it, do you not want to uh, play it immediately? Give it some extra health. I'll tell you what's weird with this, though. And a little bit odd. Is how do you track max health? Because, like, usually with a summon, right? It's, like, tracked in a very simple way. But this, for example, if we were to do this on the first turn, right? Let's say it's got 16 health. It takes some damage. You know, it gets hit a few times, whatever. Drops down to, like, 10. If we try and heal it, you have to remember that it has maximum 16 health, right? Just use a damage counter. <sighs> damage counters are not meant to be used. They're meant to be punched and then immediately put into a box and never used ever again. Hmm. <laughs> We need physical bases. The HP dials, definitely. It says may use a card. That target only allies like retaliate for another tank. Oh, oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's actually really good idea. Feed me. So we can now use all of those really. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's you're definitely in it for the long one, right? That is like the long con like you're there. Like. <laughs> Like you're like you're taking all of these cards that are like retaliate on your buddies, and they're like, "What are you doing?" You're like, "Don't worry, guys. Level nine, get to level nine, and they're like, Beta Aegis plays retaliate on me. We did it. Peak Gloomhaven achieved. <laughs> I like it. Like, if you were to start at like you know really high prosperity level. play retaliate on it because of some initiatives yeah but then you move past it right it's at the end of this summons turn so it takes its turn right i guess it's just uh, i guess it just moves with like melee focus then you get it to play the retaliate on you then you move past it and oh, then you're the main tank right it just sits behind you you just leapfrog it every time but i mean like yeah it, it could get itself into a sticky situation 
weren't a lot of those bottom actions. Wasn't that one on like a big top? Wasn't it? I swear one was a big top. I remember reading it thinking this is the worst card I've seen. Yeah. Finally, we know why this level three exists. <laughs> oh. And you get to model yourself. Winner. <laughs> Full on winner. Yeah, this is like... I mean, this is obviously pretty crazy because you could just... I mean, what kind of cards would you want with this? Would this be your new tank? No. I mean, it could be. I guess you I guess you just make colonies with it, right? You just make colonies with it. That would be the best use of this. Just keep it moving, makes a colony. Keep it moving, makes a colony. Like, so then you don't have to waste your turns making colonies because you just have this thing running around spitting out colonies for you, right? 97 initiative. That's super, super late. The bottom is place one colony token of your choice in any empty hex within range two. Disarm two enemies adjacent to the place colony token. Well, that's OP as well. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, I mean, it's just basically advance your game plan of colonies and disarm two people in the process. Pretty good. And we have one level eight card that targets all adjacent. Yeah, then you immediately you could try and do that. I guess the, the problem is though, is that if say for example, you were to place this in between two enemies, there's a chance that one of them might walk onto it or like if they were like back and you put it in front of them, like you'd have to be careful about where you place it, you know? Cause they could just immediately walk through it. Cause they're to some, they're not immobilized. So they could in theory, just walk straight into it on that turn. I guess you could do an end of round, maybe. Because it's 97 initiative. But... Yeah, and disarming generally, to me, always feels like something you want to do early rather than late. I've never been a big fan of the kind of late disarm, late stun. Because you just don't know what they're doing on the next round. Like, they could just do a heal action. It's like, whatever. You know? Interesting. I like the idea of this guy. Spiders has definitely warped this entire character. It's a bit like Vengeance. Why did it have to be Vengeance? They're immobilized because of spiders. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> yeah. Tricky thing is you have to choose between play the summon early or disarm early and then play it later. Well, I feel like getting colony tokens out pretty fast seems good. You don't have to necessarily play it early because... It just takes your health at that point. So you could always heal back up to full health or try to, right? Then just do it. Right, the other one is Supreme Authority. At the start of each of your turns, you may move a colony token up to three hexes. Whenever a colony token is destroyed, an enemy of your choice within range three suffers poison, wound, and muddle. Okay. That's actually pretty nice. Like, if you wanted, like, a... Like the top of the colony token build? Man, why did they do that on the bottom of this as well? That's some like weird choices with the like the where where they're putting abilities on these cards. I'm like what like I mean they these things could kind of achieve a very similar thing. I really like the idea of this one though. So we get a free move at the start of each of my turns and also it has no range to it which is kind of important here because all of the other moves were like move something within range two move something within range three this is just like move a colony token up to three hexes so if you leave one behind you can kind of get it to catch up uh, whenever a colony token is destroyed an enemy of your choice within range three suffers poison wound and muddle all good effects and they can get destroyed in multiple ways either we can destroy them people can stand on them Stuff can happen, right? But, like, I think that this is probably the really good one. Part of this. Just keeping the colony tokens moving. After you first play, you might recommend not taking spiders. So you don't limit yourself to play because it's top. Yeah, maybe. 
Again, you kind of want... Yeah, I mean, like, they just needed to be one more spider card, honestly. There just need to be one more spider token card. Disarm the on three initiatives. Pretty OP. Yeah. The bottom of this is uh, place one colony token of your choice in any adjacent empty hex. All characters nice within range three of the place goes in game ward. Yeah, kind of a bit boring, that one at the bottom there. Hmm. I mean, thematically, this is excellent. Actually, excellent. Like, really good. And I really want to play with it because it just feels wonky as all hell. And that's kind of like what level 9 should be. Just wonky as all hell, right? Just whatever. Just... Like, screw it. Throw caution to the wind. Just do something silly. Have some broken power level stuff. But then this also just feels like a really good passive ability in general. But it would have been really nice to have this earlier on. I mean, it's probably going to have to be this because this is very strong too. Hmm. Yeah. If you don't pick and pick Divide and Conquer and play the top, then you're no fun. Yeah, it's pretty much pretty much how i feel about it too there's a lot of burns at the end right we got quite a lot of like passive ability burns towards the end of this character you can't play them all right let me get this one where was the damage one like how many of these did we have Bunch. <clears throat> it's a shame the other level 9 card gives teeth to your colonies with wound, poison, and mole when the other one is so thematically amazing. I think the positioning of these abilities is wrong. Spiders should be level 9 and you choose between them and the duplicate. I, I don't disagree that spiders should be nine. Spiders are just too good. What if this top ability was on this card? Keep this here. Let's swap this top to this bottom. Remove this. Ignore this. Take this out of the game. Take this out of the game. Put spiders at nine here, and maybe maybe put some maybe put some variation of this ability, like in in place of spiders. Some kind of variation of placing colony tokens or something. Because I feel like what's really cool with this guy is that he could just place a load of your colonies for you. And then once you're... Um... Actually, no, sorry. You wouldn't want this there. Sorry. You wouldn't want this there. Because they're two, two burns. You wouldn't want that there. This, ne this needs to be earlier on. This needs to be like level 8 or something. Put, put this top ability... Instead of spiders. Bring spiders over. And that's fine. Swap this and spiders, basically, pretty much. <clears throat> All the level up burn passes feel trappish. Gives you, giving you may pick one, then see what leveling up give more, and either switching or avoiding them. Given we have none at level one to level up to, you think? 
Um, that's fair. Another character that really um, suffers from this, in my opinion, is the hatchet. Man, do they just keep throwing burns at you on the hatchet. Every single level, it's like, hey, kids, you fancy another burn? I'm like, no, I don't. Leave me alone, please. But how about if we gave you wound and poison on all of your... No, stop it. Please, stop it. Get some help. And I, I, I think this character has a bit of that. Really has a, has a bit of that. Wow, this character really kind of like... I don't know. It like, it fell off the rails a bit, didn't it, huh? Like, in general, I really like the theme. And there are a couple of cards that are just like... Mwah, amazing. Really well designed. Like this one in particular as well. Really well designed. Really well thought out. Like really unique angle to look at a tank great theme like just there's so many strengths but there are also just some like blatant pitfalls that they've fallen into they're like man like just kind of like what are we doing with ourselves too much too, i think also too much retaliate at level one in my opinion like a bit too much retaliate early on like, you get hammered in hard that you want to do Retaliate early. And then the game's like, oh, well, now here's a bunch of attacks. Like, okay. I've been kind of been playing Retaliate the whole time. No, no, no. Now play attacks. I didn't like it at the start, though. Yeah, I think... Well, that... You could argue, though, at the start, that was just the ordering of the cards that I read. <laughs> Like, so if these cards were not, like, ordered like this... Obviously, I'm just going from top to bottom. If we'd started with, like, these three cards, maybe I would have had a slightly different opinion. But it's just the way the cards were ordered in the in the document. It's, you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. But yeah, I definitely had, like, a bit of a uh, fairly low. Then it sort of peaked up and I was enjoying it. And then it kind of fell off again. And I said, spider... I think spiders was the, what was the point where that kind of all just... It, the, it all kind of came crashing down around that point, to be honest. Because um, it made it blatantly obvious. They're like, well, what are we doing? Like, we only have one card that makes this. And it's also got a ridiculous other half. Like, it just made, it just... And then we're like, well, we're never going to get to use spiders. Like, we spent the whole time getting excited about spiders, being able to get spider colonies. And I was like, I can't wait until these guys, like, are really cool. And it even did what I thought it was going to do. I was like, yeah, I thought there was going to be, like, one that kind of did something like this. And then, oh, on the flip side, here's, like, the best summon ever made. Almost. I would say that maybe this could be the best summon ever made. It's quite close to that, too. But in terms of, like, raw damage potential, just, like, forget, like make them and forget about them type type thing <clears throat> you saw the additional colony cards at four and five got excited for colony stacking and it turned out that was it yeah fair and like i said as well there's a few things with this character where actually like the actions themselves are a little bit boring, but they might just be necessary, right? Like, it's just like... And that's not... It's just maybe part and parcel of playing a tank character sometimes. Like, I've said this before. It's really hard to make fun tanks. Because... The, the, the two main mechanics that they have is shield and retaliate. That's kind of it. So, if you're going to make a fun tank, you're going to have to explore outside of that somewhat. And that's difficult. Like, how do you do that? And they did... I, I think using health instead of shield was a really smart idea. That's actually like, yeah, okay. But it doesn't really make... It's not like a super exciting idea, though. It's just like, hey, I'm a guy with a bunch of health. You know, it, it didn't, like, give you some really fun mechanic for you to play with and dials for you to twist as a player. It just kind of was like, yeah, you got a bunch of health. And we just won't give you shield. Okay. You know, because they could have just said, here's a normal amount of health. And here's a bunch of shield. And we would have been the same, right? So, 
I like it was a, it was a clever idea, but ultimately it didn't really solve the problem, which is that you need there needs to be something new and fresh about tanks. I think because we've had you know the sun best at shielding, we've had red guard best at retaliate. You know, every other character who's kind of done shielding, you you could say three spears best at item usage. Okay, like plays around with that a lot. Every other character who kind of tanks does a sort of an off job, like brute, pretty average job. Um, two minis, average job. So, I don't know, it's just, yeah. <clears throat> Class design is brilliant, and a lot of people have fun, but it's also, hey, BG. That being said, you will not personally play test CS material with this class in your party because it has abilities significantly stronger than the rest of the classes. I.e. no other class has that strong a summon at level 7. In some party comps, it is broken. I would imagine it's broken in pretty much most party comps, which is what we kind of identified. It's a real problem. It's a real problem. And it's, it's the vengeance problem, right? It's the vengeance problem. Rearing his head at level 7 again. There he is. Three spears, best of people forgetting tanking was ever an option. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've just, I know, I know people do play that character as a tank. Maybe not what it's known for, but I know a lot of people who like to have fun with like using the summons as just like fodder and refreshing them or even using iron ring. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I, I think this character has a lot of good things going for it like a lot of really cool things going for it but it just falls down in a few kind of key areas for me which i think i figure i would still have fun playing it right over something like the bright spark where like the bright spark i could look at and be like it's fine it's just not particularly interesting for me this character is more interesting for me but therefore it's a little bit frustrating when you have that issue right for me, it's more frustrating when I really like what a class is doing. And then there's just something that I'm not really vibing with it. And I'm like, ah, oh, just didn't quite get to what I was hoping for. It didn't quite go the direction that I personally was hoping for, which is fine because, you know, other people, it might have gone in the direction that they really wanted. But yeah, it's just one of those, you know, when you get kind of invested in a character, you're like, yeah, man, I think this is going to be really cool. And, and it just, just doesn't quite get to that point where you were like, oh, yeah. But maybe playing it would be a slightly different experience. Again, this is my first... You know, I have to always caveat that. This is literally my first impression just looking at the cards. You know, a lot of this stuff can just come out in the playing. So never, I will never ever write off a class until I've played it. Like ever. This is... You never know. <clears throat> mm -mm. There are a bunch of interesting immobilized cards for control. I agree with that. I feel like the character has... It, you started off a bit weak in that respect, like being able to ensure you trigger your retaliates, but actually, as the levels went on, you got some really powerful tools. Your personal belief is adding the fourth colony type hurts more than helps. That's a very interesting observation, actually. It's a great point. I, do you know what? Honestly, do you know what I would have done? Do you know what I would have done? Taking this off the board. I mean, maybe, maybe you can't really do that because, of course, the tokens are in the box. Maybe you can't do that, but... Like, in a weird way, I would have liked the spiders to have been, like, the reveal. Like, do we really need to know what all of these are? I mean, I guess it's just space. You may as well use it. And I guess the tokens are in the box, so it's hard to not reveal that. I don't know. Interesting thought. I just would have loved the spiders to have been used a bit more. It all, it all felt like it was building towards spiders... And in the end, it definitely was, but not for the right reasons. 
but not for the right reasons. <clears throat> one of the goals of any game, especially an RPG, is to get that really cool weapon or ability to melt your enemies. When one shows up, it isn't a problem. It's cool. Yeah, the playing with power is fun. Like I said, I think playing with power is fun. And I think that's what level nines are for. That's what I think level nines are for. Not level sevens, personally. Like, I feel like you should still feel like your character is powerful and you're getting more powerful. But having a card... And also, consider this. We didn't play a single summon up to that point. None. We had no interaction with summons, really. No, like, feeling like we had much synergy with them. Like, we just didn't really, like... They weren't really just part of what we thought we had in our kit. Um, and then suddenly we get a summon that's stupidly powerful, right? It's just like a bit... Like, what would have been cooler is if we got a stupidly good colony, right? Imagine if instead of it being like just a summon, imagine if they just seriously buffed Spider's top. Made Spider top like really cool. Made that super powerful. I've lost Spider's. Where are you, Spider's? Like, so, instead of this even being a thing, make this colony, right? Range 4 was already a big buff, because it was only range 2 before. And then maybe this is, like, 2 damage, right? Or maybe it's, like, at the end of their turn or something, an enemy will take it. Right? Just make this, like, really cool. And then you're like, I'm in, because it's just, it's just the, it's the top of colonies, it's like colonies are now like really cool. I'm so happy that I've got like this crowning colony jewel, right? That's what I think you should do. But instead, you just make a really strong summon, which could have been on any character, really. Any character could have had this. You could have put this on anybody, right? And the only thing that's making this a little bit more like us is the fact that it's eh, spiders. It's immobilized and it's poison because those are some sub-themes of our character kind of going going forward. So, like, it's just... Like, just... You know, if you want to go... F if you want to go for power, go for power within the mechanic that you've given us and we've been playing with and, in and, and enjoying up to this point. You know, don't put the power in something that's like... You know, just like a no-brainer. Like, you know... <clears throat> is there a perk deck for this character yeah we can we can look at those again i'll just put them up we did go through them earlier but essentially the perks for this character are are just very reliable you can get rid of pretty much well you can get rid of all of your minuses but you can put another minus one in if you want to to place the colony token up here um but then you can get a lot of good rolling cards to add extra damage immobilize heals shield stuff so this character can pretty can pretty reliably draw um, plus one to plus two easily, I would say, at high level. So your summons are going to be attacking for a good amount as well, you know. <clears throat> it makes you wish that Vengeance Top was a six element use for Elementalist. That would make that card really cool. As a stat now, it really hurts an otherwise perfect character. Yeah, and, and the way you could have... Yeah, if you made, like, Vengeance cost, like... Like, just all of the elements. Then at least you'd have to, like, spend... Like, you'd have to spend an entire turn setting it up for the next turn, right? Like, an entire, like... You'd have to take an entire turn off to just make it. Or you'd have to get your buddies. Maybe not make it, like, all of the elements. Maybe make it, like... I don't know. Three or four. You know, if spiders read like perform attack for immobilize each turn, people would be like, that's so OP, but since it's a summon, it's overlooked, and that's essentially what it is. Well, the thing is with summons is that a lot of people are like, well, they'll die, right? Like, summons are not always great. There are some scenarios they're going to struggle in. And they'll die to retaliate. They'll get focused by a multi-target enemy at some point, And they'll just die. And that, that could happen. That could happen. But a good 
but if you if you if you're good, then you can a lot of the time protect them. Do I agree that triangles is perfect? I was like, no, I don't agree with that at all. No, I agree that vengeance could definitely just be have higher requirements to play it to activate what well, to activate the kill requirement. I think you need to do a little bit more to make it a perfect class. Mainly fix level one. <laughs> Between Luminae and the rest of your party, you have had a loaded element board three, four times over seven scenarios. Yeah, that's um, Luminary. This is pretty good at get dishing elements around. This character was pretty generous with elements too, I thought. Pretty damn generous, essentially. So, I think to wrap up, that was some really, really good. Um, it's really good to like have a character that we can talk a lot about, though, as well. I think that's always good. It was nice that we can kind of like sit here and we can actually like, you know, give some feedback and like what our initial thoughts are on the character and different things. To me, that's good because there's 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 definitely like a really good core to this character that is there and it's done really well it's just like a few of the finishing touches just for me fell a bit flat and i think that that's um it's great that we can just like you know have this conversation about it rather than it being like a character that is like yeah we don't like it move on you know it's good to be able to sit here and actually like talk this out The bottom of Divide and Conquer level 9 looks like it will go good with the Bane card since you can place the colony the same turn to position it early. Ah. Yes. Also will work quite nicely. Um, like, well, you see, so I guess you do this, then you could place another one. Getting two obstacles out for the Bane card. Bane's going to be an interesting one. I don't know how I feel about Bane yet. I need to play some more with it. <clears throat> you always prefer it when we love the character, but an occasional one to talk some criticism is fine too. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's not like... Like, I want to be very clear. We're not coming We're not coming from like a, a place of... You know, don't like this character. Like, it's very much like a, I think that this character... And I wouldn't... I think I would like to play this character... I think that there's something here that I will enjoy. It just didn't quite finish in the direction that I thought, which is fine. I'll just make sure I retire this character before level seven if I was going to be playing it, right? I mean, or I just wouldn't I'd just take the other card or something, you know, just try and do something a bit different. It's just, yeah, it's just like there's, it's healthy. And I think like, as some people say, Triangles is their favorite character. Like we're talking about Triangles in chat, like Phantom's favorite character is Triangles. I'm sure some of you other guys' favorite character is Triangles. I don't like it. <laughs> but uh, some people love it. So, you know, what do I know? <laughs> okay, so there we have it. The Amber Aegis. A very interesting class with the colony system. I think that that was a really kind of uh, neat idea. It really um, was something quite unique to this character and that huge health pool as well it's a very interesting way of approaching tanking so instead of giving characters lots of just shielding cards which is like traditionally what the game's done or giving you like uh, enemies disadvantage and cursing and things like that just give the character a bunch of health and then just see how long they can kind of maintain that health really and uh, that's a really interesting idea i do feel like uh, you know during the video as i said in my little inter segment where i came in halfway through that there is uh, some problems maybe with stalk the prey or there was some problems and that did warp our conversation a lot towards the end of this video but uh, I feel like, um, you know, even with the nerfs, it's still pretty strong. Still probably something you want to play. And I do feel like perhaps there could have been a bit more opportunity to use the colonies in more fun ways. They were, you know, ultimately they were um, maybe a little bit underutilized towards the end once we got to the high levels. But I've said this about many classes before. It gets really difficult in the high level kind of cards in, in Gloomhaven because 
you're really just printing either better versions of cards you've already made or you kind of print something that's crazy powerful and then it kind of like screws everything so you know triangles is a great example of this you know even like spell weavers level nine you know things like that there are there are cards um we're specifically triangles level seven by the way but if you are you know looking at these types of things sometimes there's a particular card it's like yeah you get to this card and then it's just play this card from now on and um that's hard and i think a lot of characters have fallen into that trap before not just the amber ages and and it's just one of those things where uh with gloomhaven sometimes you lose a bit of momentum there which might mean that you don't want to play every single character up to level nine i mean i personally usually enjoy it and just enjoy the power level at level nine usually comes with but i think that's a worth kind of um considering and pointing out here that yeah sometimes characters can sometimes just be their best from level one to level five or one to level six lightning bolt is an exa great example of that for me personally i really like lightning bolt all the way up to about four and five then afterwards i actually start to dislike the character over time so yeah i i think um this is maybe a character a little bit like that i just kind of wish that maybe the spider stuff came in a little bit earlier or on a different card in some different format because you know we've been waiting for these spiders for so long and then when we get the actual card you know there was this really really good summon on the other side of it so it was yeah the spider colonies didn't really kind of ever come into our mind as like a viable strategy so yeah but all in all an enjoyable character one that i think a lot of people who enjoy playing tanky characters but also just like weird kind of like interactive characters as well like keeping those colonies alive is going to be interesting and making sure the enemies don't move through them or allies and things so yeah a very very unique character for sure incredibly unique so i think a lot of people are going to enjoy this one okay before we wrap up as always a big thank you again to all of my supporters over on patreon and my subscribers on twitch the patreon names coming up on screen now in particular a big thank you to mike and to truck driving gamer for the legendary support guys that's incredibly kind of you both i really appreciate it. thank you so much if you would like to catch me playing gloomhaven live then come over to twitch.tv slash request every monday wednesday and sunday we are wrapping up the crimson scales kind of character reviews at least of the the base set we've got trail of ashes coming down the line so i'm sure we'll be doing some more as well in the future but we'll be wrapping that up shortly but we will be starting our physical playthrough of crimson scales pretty soon so if you'd like to see some of these characters actually in action then it'll be a good time to join the stream soon okay as always then guys thank you again so much for watching i will catch you in the next video bye that's the blessing so, from uh, I, Isaac. At this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck <laughs> for allies in the digital version? <laughs>